everybody uh sorry i didn't i kind of zoned out while i was waiting for that uh for the song to finish and then the song started again before i you know snapped back in but anyway hi everybody welcome back uh, i hope you've all had a great week um and have a good weekend ahead of you um <clears throat> today is uh <sighs> A bit of a tired day for me if i'm honest um and i'm kind of fighting a bit of a headache so until the uh the uh pain meds kick in for the headache uh i'm i'm probably going to be a bit low energy uh so i'm sorry about that ahead of time um but uh also there's a little bit of brain fog just a little bit not much just a little bit but um oh uh before we get started properly uh let me quickly say i have a patreon which is patreon.com slash crimson knight patreon.com slash k-r-i-m-z-o-n-k-n-i-g-h-t just as it's displayed on the screen uh you could support me there for a dollar a month um or if you want to help me out by uh, tipping me uh, through Twitch, just do the exclamation mark tip in the Twitch chat. Um, or you could, or if you, or you could subscribe to me through Twitch um, if you want. Uh, if you have a, if you have Amazon Prime, you get a free Twitch subscription, uh, but you have to re-up it every month and blah 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 blah. Um, trying to think uh what else there's also um oh if you're watching this on youtube uh please like and subscribe and share and comment and share um the uh any little bit from y'all can help um, I also have a throne wish list if you all want to get me something nice. Um, some lovely viewers of mine have already gotten me this beautiful controller here uh, for me to use. And I've been using it and it's amazing. Uh, I love it so much. But uh, that's throne.com slash crimson knight spelled exactly how it is right here. K-R-I-M-Z-O-N-K-N-I-G-H-T. And it's throne.com slash crimson knight. So those are the way you can uh those are the way various different ways you can help support me uh and make it so that I can continue to uh create content in a way that I enjoy and hopefully you all enjoy as well. Um But uh Yeah. Anyway, today we're gonna be going into the second chapter of Tell Me Why. Um the first chapter was oof. Oof, that that, that, mm. that hit hard. Um, and I really hope that the second chapter is uh, continues that trend. It's by Don't Nod Studios, so I'm not. I won't be surprised if the, if it if it's just absolutely amazing throughout the way throughout the course of the game. But uh, do I want to go through a bit of a last time on? The game might do one themselves. We'll see if the game does one. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and get back into it. Tell me why he ain't nothing but a heartache. Hold on just a second while I'm thinking about it. Let me quickly check audio levels. Okay. We have all of the collectibles from the first chapter and carry on once upon a time in a deep and ancient forest there lived a <clears throat> pair of crafty goblins the crafty goblins did everything together until one day when darkness overwhelmed the big wooden house in which they lived the 
Blamed for the darkness, Brother Goblin was forced to leave the forest, while his sister had to stay behind. They are recapping. Brother was sent to prison for killing the mother, Today which we found out later, the sister had actually night. done. And together, they decided to confront the darkness in the big wooden house. And there was some extra weird stuff happening. Though they sought the help of their friends in the forest, they found that no one wanted to delve into the long gone past. Yeah. Not willingly, at least. The goblins found themselves alone in the woods, trying to discover why darkness had submerged the big wooden house. That's a great way of re recapping it. And also confirming the whole thing that is the allegory of the tale of the goblins. <laughs> Tomorrow we should play Compass and North Star in the woods. Be sure to wear your hat then. <laughs> you be sure to wear your hat. <laughs> All right, who wants ice cream? Me! Eat up. Without a word, she went out and buried the tiara in the ground beneath the sapling. And as the final scoop of dirt fell, the tiara felt truly gone. And with it, the final link to her old self. She could only go forward and find a new place for herself in this world, where she was no longer truly a princess in a tiara and a beautiful gown, but a wan woman, alone in a deep and ancient wood. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure, and her title. I don't like that story. There were no goblins, and it was depressing. We won't read it again. I love you, Mom. Not me. She's <laughs> just kidding. Love you, Mom. I love you too. Sleep well and dream, my doves. Yeah, she was telling them she the if you look at the tales, she's definitely telling them a fairy taleized version of her backstory. Ollie? Oh, that's right. Tyler went by Ollie before. What a waste. Yeah, this is going to be when Al this is going to be Allison's side of what happened. Tyler took the fall to protect Allison.
I'm loving this. This is beautiful. Ain't nothing but a heartache. <laughs> hey, Em. Thanks for popping in. loving it so far the first chapter was truly amazing and i am so looking forward to the second chapter uh i'm doing all right uh i've been fighting a bit of a headache and i'm a little tired so i'm it's a low energy day but i'm doing all right if you haven't played this game before i absolutely recommend it played it before? Hey. Man, that whole sequence was amazing. It was fun. I'm good. I'm glad you I that's good. Here I'm glad you enjoyed it. Chapter of our lives, you know. And instead we spun off a whole miserable prequel trilogy. We're not letting ourselves do this again. Come on. And yeah, no oh, bones. My numbing a very good way of, way of saying it. Troubles. My numbing labor Can't is a great way of coffee instead. I mean, no. On your feet, soldier. <laughs> Let's my take a break labor. from packing and sort out the furniture. Mm. If we get enough done, I'll drive you into town and buy you a gallon of ice cream. Mint chocolate chip, two gallons. Let's do this. <laughs> I mean, it's Goblin a face is wonder cheap. Dollar sign is donate or sell, and trash can as well. Trash. By the way, I cleared out most of the stuff from the bathroom this morning, but I left you the toilet. How very generous of you. We don't really want to keep anything in here. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Negotiate your worth. Thanks for clearing out those cabinets. Not my pleasure. Not my pleasure. Valid. Oh, ew, ew, ew. Raven Sarah. Oh, God. I can still taste it. Put it away. Ugh. Yeah. Say ah. Uh. I remember cutting off shaving cream beards with these. Oh, yeah.
real quick M, have you played Life is Strange? Because it's because if not, you sh if you liked this, you'd probably very much love the Life is Strange series. Yes, yeah, it it, it was indeed very good. I've not actually gotten around to finishing it because things keep getting in the way. What about that and dresser? I'm... If you want your towels to rot, go for it. Fair enough. Junkyard. Fair. Very fair. Um, uh, a full clap and a half from him. Very, very, uh, accurate, I guess. But, um, I haven't finished it because I keep like it was actually kind of funny because I got to like the I don't remember which chapter of Life is Strange one I got to and then the game crashed and corrupted the save file on the on the Steam server so I lost my progress <laughs> and I was just like Oh, I have to start it over again. Okay, fine. I'll do it tomorrow or something like that. And then tomorrow just never came. And I'm not going to... Yeah, I, I would play it on stream. Uh, I would stream it, but the... um. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I would stream it, except... Uh, I would get my my channel would absolutely get nuked by Twitch because it because of all of those copyrighted songs in that game. All right, let's let's. All right, we looked at those. Everywhere I look, there's just stuff, stuff, and more stuff. Mary and the Magpie. I mean, also that's how people live. Hello, usually. ancient broken down machines. That will be the future owner's problem. <laughs> Valid. All right. What to do with this? Uh, you could probably get some good money for it. Maybe it's pretty bulky. To refinish it. Yeah, it, it. I would say keep it, except that it's a very bulky object, and I worry that it wouldn't travel well. You know, so yeah, absolutely going to have that sell, sold, sell, sold. What's this doing down here? Goblins were here, written on the bottom. Is that gum? Oh, I guess that was probably me. <laughs> all right. Oh, I still need to read through all of these. These are um, the the few I've read of these are amazing. All right, let's look at the collectible we just got. The big frog. The big frog is an effervescent creature who tries to be kind, but is also a tireless gossip. The ice king punished her once by telling her his deepest secret. If she ever tells anyone, she'll lose her voice forever. The whole thing wasn't a wad of gum. It was gum that was holding the thing in place. <laughs> I completely forgot we had a pet vol for True. a few days. Poor volcano. She was in rough shape when we found her. Good thing Volcano. Marianne actually knew what she was doing with injured wildlife. Lasagna! Lasagna! Finish your salad first. Thank you, Tessa. You're a lifesaver. No, oh, don't worry about it. They're just leftovers from the restaurant. What about Volcano? She needs to eat her lunch, too. <laughs> You're quite right, love. Uh, she can have my corn. <laughs> Here you go, little one. You must be hungry, too. <laughs> Aww. Tessa really did keep us all fed. 
She always tried to take care of everyone. Still does, I guess. Yeah. It's always good to have somebody like that in your life. I guess it's finally time to take these pictures down. Yeah. Still deciding what to do with them. I mean, most of them are pretty happy memories. I guess. You look cute here. That's not me. I mean, it is, but... But not really. I get it. It's just weird. I'm seeing myself like that again. Damn. Didn't think a picture could throw me like this anymore. I'm sorry. That sounds really rough. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm like a thousand times better, but I've got a ways to go before I'm comfortable taking my shirt off. Which is why I'm scheduling my top surgery as soon as we sell this house. No more putting a binder on every morning. God, that sounds fucking amazing. Yeah, totally. Just so you know, I'll be there to help out when you do. Whatever you need. <laughs> Thanks. All right. What's your verdict, Ronan? You know what? I'll keep a few. To remind us how far we've come. Oh, I'm... Man. I love this one. <laughs> Why do I look so pissed? I remember loving this. Maybe because Marianne was sticking a camera in your face? Come on. I'm in love with this story so far. And I have so many theories. You know? Where, where's the memory? There's the memory. Come on, honey, smile like Allison. Hold up your fish. It's not my fish anymore. Allison stole it. <gasps> my sister, the fish thief. <laughs> you were just being bratty. Was I though? Yes. All I did was help clean it when we were out on the porch. Eddie had to force you to share. <laughs> Allison. I appreciate I asked that. I you to clean up the coffee table three times already. <sighs> no spoilers. Oops. I forgot. Do 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 do. What? 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 Look. Ugh. Gross stain is gross. Uh, yeah. what happened? Some unfortunate spillage that brought about the end of indoor tea parties. I hid the stain with my toys, forgetting that they would eventually be picked up. Brilliant move, Ronan. Well, I seem to recall a time you stole an egg, put it on the couch, and sat on it because you wanted a pet chicken. <laughs> we don't talk about that. Uh-huh. Well, at least I didn't leave a stain. Yes, there are only three chapters to it. Um, there are only three chapters to it. This is the start of the second. According to what I've seen online, each chapter is approximately three and a half hours. So I'm thinking that uh, I did the first chapter last week. Um, and if you want to see the VOD for that, it should be up on my YouTube now. Um, but uh, I did the first chapter that last week. I'll do the second chapter today. And then next week, I'll do the final chapter is my thoughts. Okay, let's see here. Before we get to the coffee table. Ooh, another memory. Ready now. Take your time. He's not going to jump up and do the cha-cha. <laughs> what about me? I want to clean the fish too. It's not even your fish. You didn't catch anything. Ugh. Only because you wouldn't stop talking and scared all the fish away. Keep your eyes on what you're doing. Allison, when we're done with this house, you can take over and do the other one. That sound fair? Yes. Mm -mm. You're right. I was kind of being a brat. Mm -hmm. All right. Ooh, what's that? That's a nice face. I wonder if my horse figurine is still in there. 
Your what now? You know, my blue toy horse. With the kind of melted face. The one you stole from me. What? That never happened. Yeah, it did. I won it at that little Halloween carnival they had at the school every year. You grabbed it and hid it in the pot. Then when I tried to get it back, you said there was a snake inside too. Whatever you say, horse face. We have the same face. <laughs> I love how they bicker with each other. All right, let's go ahead and do this. All right, I'll clean it up. Thanks. While you do that, I'll check out the furniture. I'm guessing you want to keep the coffee table? If there's anything you want, speak now. I'm not really planning on Absolutely. bringing furniture to Denali. And if I need a base in Juno, you'll have all the furniture I need. How very non-committal of you. All right, I'll keep it. Are you gonna keep- I really like that armchair. It'll look sharp next to your tree stump nightstand. I'll be the most stylish mountain man ever. But I was actually thinking it should go in your library. Library? We may not even have a living room. <laughs> I have faith in you. Maybe it'll be salvageable with a deep clean? Yes, you are. <laughs> Having fun, are we? And finally. I hate to say it, but the couches get a one-way ticket to the dump. No protest here. I think I have permanent knee damage from a decade of bumping into the corner of those damn things. Well, then that's it for the living room. You are relieved from your duties. This is getting utterly ridiculous. I'm wait, I, I need there to be an achievement for this. I need there to be an achievement for this because I, I. All right, I guess that is pretty funny. There we go. I got an achievement for it. I did. I got an achievement for it. Prove to Tyler that moo boxes are pretty funny. The furniture won't move itself. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see what else there is. Um, let's look under here again, just in case I missed something. I don't see anything. Just the goblins were here. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I looked at these. There wasn't anything in particular about them. Okay, we looked in the bathroom. Oh, sorry, Tyler. A dump in cake. Totally not screenshotting that recipe. Every day, please, mom. <laughs> yep. All right. Ancient appliances, you are staying here. Although, that oven looks in okay enough shape. No way. That's it. We are not moving the oven. There's the dog named Nut. You hungry? We have a whole lot of nothing. Aw, uh, I was hoping maybe you could make me one of those pickle and ketchup sandwiches. I'm sorry, sir. We are all out of pickles today. <laughs> could I interest you in a ketchup-only sandwich? <laughs> Looks like there's still a bottle back here. Uh, ew. Says the guy who used to eat peanut butter with ranch. Mm -mm. So good. 
But yeah, the the dog named Nut. Nut. Do it. You're doing a great job. Uh, thanks. Ah. Ah, she decided to keep him. Peanut butter does not make mix with ranch and he got nothing this nothing to say about it. <laughs> hmm. Crummy table and wobbly chairs. Uh, somebody could probably make something out of that. We could make some pretty good money if we sell this. Maybe make a college we know student end up happy. On the couch most of the time, anyway. Oh. oh yeah, they God. did. That's what's that smell? What's that smell? What's that smell? Yes, they did. the auto mods had to have a second thought about that. Delicious indeed. Or it could have been Stinky Pants Sam. <laughs> oh, Stinky Pants Sam! <laughs> Come on now. Sam got that smell getting a skunk out of our barn. Be nice. <gasps> a skunk? What did you do to her? Is she okay? <laughs> sure is. She just went hunting for food and couldn't get back out. All she needed was a little nudge to get her on her way. Sam Kansky. Hero of skunk kind. I remember being super impressed by him, and it made me want to be a wild animal superhero too. Aw, says the one who went to ranger school. Sam Kansky being bear, old bear. All right, anything else? Now the question is: Is the sticky note still on Tyler's back? Hey, Allison. No, nope, he removed take a it. Break with me. Uh, nope, gotta go upstairs first. Actually, you know what? No, I will join you, actually. Hold on, hold on. One more time, one more time, one more time, one more time. This is such a moving game. Hey, Queen Freak, you want coffee? <laughs> Starting the fire again? Yeah, I'm gonna boil some water. You want something to drink? Ooh, tea or coffee? Tea or coffee? I know what Emily's gonna vote. Tea. Gray or chai? Your call. I'm fixing myself a good Stakes old cup really of Stakes are really high. Ah, nice pot of wakey wakey juice. Papa needs his rocket fuel. <sighs> I am so glad Eddie came through on the caffeine. Shh, did you hear that? The Ice King is sending us a warning. Okay, before I remember that, I do want to go look poke around upstairs. Just because I haven't yet, and I don't want to miss anything. I don't want to miss and a thing. You know, more stuff. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. Hey, Tyler. How does five little monkeys go again? Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell down and bumped his head. Mama called the doctor. The doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. Oh, did I miss a thing? No, okay. Oh, bear. Baloney. <laughs> Guess who I found? Baloney. Alley belly baloney? Why, yes. I would love to have a tea party with you again for the third time today. We should gather up all our old toys and give them to charity. Hey, did you finish packing up there? Nope, those paddles are pretty cool. Dibs. What's soft? What light through yonder? Oh, wait, it's just the ice. 
Clever. Clever. There's a paper plane stuck in the ceiling light. Maybe it has a secret message from our past self. Find something to knock it down. Hmm. I could use that ball. <laughs> oh, temptation! Ah! No, I'll okay. do the thing. Let's see if I can still do this. Five bucks says you miss. All right. Oh my god. Wow. This is crazy. What is it? Allison, uh, big right. fat loser. You're no better at insults than you were at 11. <laughs> Why mess with perfection? <sighs> Will this ever stop feeling so weird? Congratulations. You found the map that will lead you on with no mishap. Follow the lake, uh, follow the trails of twinkling stones, and for a chance, you'll escape the unknown. To Ollie from Allison, others may not understand the laughs we have together and love we share for each other, but I know whatever happens, every goblin has a twin. I love you. Happy Siblings Day. Aww. Oh. Yeah, the th if I could, if there was a save option, I absolutely would have. And if I was certain that Tyler would have given the ball back and let me go for the plane a second time, <coughs> then I would have been, then I would have absolutely done that. But, <coughs> excuse me. Dearest Ollie, how are you? I'm in the boathouse and everything is going well. I'm writing this letter to formally invite you to my tea party. I will prepare tea and cookies and you can meet my dearest friend, Baloney, who I know you will love. Please come this afternoon at 4 p.m. Kind regards. Dear Allison, thanks so much for the invitation. Everything is good here too. No beavers in sight though. I will be there at 4.15, please. Not because I need to make sure to feed the birds or mom will go crazy. See you soon, Sir Ollie. True. Yeah, I I will probably do that. So long, trusty bunk beds. Okay. So, you gonna come back down to help me or what? Yes, but first I wanna look at this. Jumping on the bed. <laughs> or out of a tree. Don't say that. Mama's gonna be so mad you had to go to the hospital. She worries way too much about what people think. Everything also money. Okay up there? Yeah. When is mom coming She'll home? She'll be here soon. Is anyone hungry? No, I'm okay. Thank you. You scared me to death when you fell out of that tree. I cried most of the way to Tessa's house. It was kind of exciting going to the hospital, but the part after that with Marianne, that was less fun. I remember the look that Tessa gave her when she finally came home. If looks could kill, right? Yeah. Just making sure there's nothing else in here. All right, let's go look at that paper airplane. Oh, it won't let me. Okay, fine. Punishment, said the Ice King. You shall be banished from the forest. And if you dare come back before the new moon, you shall feel my anger in your gut. Hear it in the wind. Whoosh! <laughs> huh. 
Do you think the Ice King would really react that way? He may be intimidating, but he's always fair and never mean. Oh, yeah, you're right. Maybe he tells the goblins to help the people they hurt instead? Great idea, sweetie. Why don't we think about it at dinner? I'll put everything away for safekeeping while you go wash your hands. Can you put them in the binder so they don't get stained? Of course, love. I still think my dark and twisty version was better. We put so many hours into that book. Yeah. Our binder was full of extra drawings and incomplete stories. I think they're all still in the kitchen drawer. I'll hydrate in a second. I have to get a drink out of my fridge. I have to get a drink out of my fridge. I'll be right Okay, I'm back. Drink, drank, drunk. Uh, to clarify, yet yeah, no, that's not water. This was full of water, but it's now out of water. So I think I'm in the clear. <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate, M. Come check this out. Allison's first drafts. <clears throat> right. Because I didn't contribute at all. Come on. I know you did. <sighs> Can't believe she kept all these. You'd think putting them on the fridge for a couple of weeks would have been enough. You know how we thought of ourselves as the goblins? Did you ever get the sense that maybe Marianne was the princess in the stories? Uh, yeah. Yes. She called her bedroom the princess's sanctum, and she was all alone in the woods, in this house, until we showed up. She was. Alone, but with a few friends who helped her along the way. What are you doing? Old Bear is definitely Sam so Kransky. If Marianne or was the princess, then who were all the rest? And here we go. Oh, come on. Humor me. The bear was the most helpful one. He was always around. Stalking her? What? No. I mean, I mean yes. He was kind of always there, lurking. And he did propose to her multiple times because we did read about the bear and the princess it, uh, last time. Uh, the bear and the princess... The bear proposed to the princess numerous times. Um, and the princess always turned her down. And Sam was very broken up when uh, he was drunk as shit on their couch last chapter <laughs> so i bet uh, i've known from the start essentially that S sam is the bear i think tessa i think tessa is probably you Mo uh, not moose but the pelican We didn't read much about the moose, did we? Because we read all about the pelican and all about the bear. Um... We don't have much about the moose in here specifically. Alright, so we've read this one. We read this one. Uh... Yeah, we read this one, and we read The Princess's Party. The Goblins of the Ice Cave, we did not read about. Once upon a time in a deep and ancient forest, the crafty goblins were playing near the glacier, uh, glacier. God, glacier, when they discovered a hole in the ice. They crept through a gradually widening passage and found themselves inside a spacious ice cave. Light spilled down the undulating blue-white hall, uh, white walls, God, in a way that made them look 
like electric waterfalls, and a column made up of hundreds of icicles stood in the center. This was a time before the goblins had settled beneath the old wooden house, and they had nowhere to live. Words be tough, it's okay. Yes, yes, thank you. Um, perhaps we could live here, they said excitedly. Moments later, the sound of stomping feet interrupted their play, and they realized that perhaps someone already lived there. They hid behind a boulder to wait and see who was coming. The old bear sauntered into the cave, shaking powdery snow from his coat. He let out a giant yawn and laid down in the corner on a pile of tree uh, tree boughs, boughs, tree boughs. Uh, snoring within seconds. When they were sure he was deep asleep, the goblins conspired to claim the cave for themselves. They chipped away at the glacier until they had filled a basket full of ice then hid once more behind their boulder and started tossing chunks of it on the sleeping bear. Now, old bear was... Sorry, I got a bug flying around me. Let me try to take care of this thing real quick. Uh oh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hold up. Did I break anything? Testing, testing. Nope. Okay. Still, still good. Uh, where did it go, you little fucker? Well, okay. Anyway. Oh, fuck. Okay. And then this. The, bu the bug wants to break the stream. Absolutely. Let me make sure that I'm actually, that everything is coming through. Okay. Yeah, we're good. All right, and then Book of Goblins, and then this again, and then this. <sighs> okay. Now, Old Bear was not the smartest creature in the forest, so when he woke up covered in ice, he roared, My cave is collapsing! Then he lumbered to his feet and ran outside before the whole thing could come down on top of him. The goblins crept out after him and did a loop before coming back to find him, sitting outside. What happened? they asked. My cave! It's collapsing! bemoaned the Old Bear. And it's time for me to hibernate. Where will I stay for the winter? It had not occurred to the goblins that the old bear had settled in for the winter, and they felt a little bad. But they did not want the old bear to know what they had done. So instead, they offered to help him find a new den. Together they searched. They inspected cavernous stone and hollowed trees and deeply pocketed knolls. Nothing they found was as beautiful as the ice cave. But the old bear settled on a packed earthen hollow that would keep him warm and dry for his long sleep. Good night, he yawned, and the goblins gleefully returned to their new home. In the spring, the old bear woke and went on a nice long walk to stretch his legs. His path took him right up to his old cave, where he heard the curious sound of laughter. Making his way inside, he was surprised to find that his cave was intact, and the goblins were inside playing a game. What is this? growled the old bear. The goblins stopped playing and looked ashamed. We're sorry, old bear, said the goblins, but we had nowhere to live and it's just so beautiful. We didn't realize you were about to hibernate and then we couldn't bear to tell you what we'd done. The old bear was angry at the trick, but the young goblins looked appropriately ashamed. And so he said, come with me. He led the crafty goblins to the hollow in which he had hibernated for the winter. You two can have this spot, he said, and look. Someone had built a big wooden house right over top it. No one lives there now, said Old Bear, but one day maybe someone will. The earthen hollow was not as beautiful as the ice cave, but it kept the goblins warm and dry, and they were excited that someday they might have someone living overhead, someone who baked cakes and tolerated their mischief. And that is the story of how the crafty goblins tried to steal the cave of the Old Bear and how they got their own instead. Okay. Princess and the Two Thieves. It's prim going to be primarily about the princess and the good old goblins. Uh, this one has me very interested, intrigued, because of these replacement lines here. 
they make me wonder if I'm going to end up peeling those away at some point, you know? Oh, moose. Upon a time in the deep and ancient forest, the crafty goblin spied on the secret keeper as she made her rounds, gathering up secrets and that the animals of the forest had for sale. How, said the first goblin, does she get people's secrets? Do you suppose she peels open their heads? Let's find out, said the second. And so the goblins watched the secret keeper. They watched her until the stalwart moose came to her, head hanging low. It was my fault. I chose the uneven trail I can't bear to remember. The secret keeper nodded and gazed into the stall into stalwart moose's eyes. Though the goblins couldn't hear anything, they knew she was speaking to the moose, for the secret keeper spoke in people's minds with the gift of the voice. After a few minutes, the stalwart moose blinked. I feel lighter, said moose. Did I give you some did I just give you something? The secret keeper nodded, handing him a coin. The stalwart moose nodded and plodded along down the trail. He spied the goblins hiding in the woods and narrowed his eyes, for he knew the goblins were up to some mischief. Were often up to mischief. The two goblins whistled innocently, and the moose was forced to carry on because they were not doing anything obviously bad. I need to know what the secret was, said one of the goblins. Let's go buy it. So the goblins approached the secret keeper before she could uh, stow away moose's secret. We want to buy Moose's secret. What do you have to trade? Asked the secret keeper, her voice filling their minds. The goblins produced a silver-handled hairbrush they had stolen from the princess, and the secret keeper nodded. And that is how the goblins came to know that Moose's mate had tumbled down a cliffside to her death. The secret keeper moved on. The first of the goblins said, I want to know more. So the goblins followed the secret keeper, hoping to find where she hid the secrets. They followed her to the peak of a nearby ridge, and watched as she stowed the rest of the day's secrets high in a cloud. Poor Moose. Yes, absolutely. Poor Moose. Uh, when she had gone, they climbed a high spruce tree that disappeared into the misty sky. They reached out and just managed to dip their hands into the clouds. Their heads were filled with memories, and they snatched their hands back out, as if they had just thrust them into boiling water. Tears poured down their cheeks. That was how the secret keeper found them, crying in the tree. You stole my secrets, seized the secret, secret keeper. Give them back. The, gobl the crafty goblins stopped crying because they saw an opportunity. What will you give us in exchange? They asked. I will give you back the silver-handled hairbrush, offered the secret keeper. For so many secrets? Pshaw. <laughs> You'll have to offer more than that. What if, said the secret keeper, I shared the gift of voice. The crafty goblins grew excited. That will do. So the secret keeper shared the gift of voice with the goblins, and immediately they found that they could hear one another's thoughts and, and feel each other's feelings. The crafty goblins gave back the secrets they had taken and ran back to the big wooden house. There they found the princess preparing food. They tried to peer into her mind, but they found it was blank. They tried to speak to her using only their minds, but she could not hear them. It seemed the secret keeper was craftier than the crafty goblins, for she had only shared enough of her power to let the goblins use the gift of voice with each other and not with the whole forest. And that is how the goblins stole the gift of voice from the secret keeper, but why they could only use it with each other. Interesting, interesting. I wonder how much truth there is to that. About the voice, I mean. Moose teaches the goblins. Once upon a time in a deep and ancient forest, the crafty goblins were hungry. This wasn't unusual. The goblins were always hungry. But today they were particularly hungry. They opened the wise princess's cupboards to look for a snack. But all she had was a, sm a small pile of nuts and berries and just one strip of dried fish. The goblins grabbed it all and gobbled it up, but they were still hungry. They went out into the woods to look for more to eat, but uh, to eat, 
First, they dropped by the small pond. The big frog was asleep, and beside the pond was a pile of insects she had caught for eating after she woke up. The goblins crept up to the pile, careful not to wake big frog. Uh, but they got cl as they got close, she riveted loudly and they froze. But the big frog kept sleeping. So they grabbed up the pile of insects and gobbled it up. But they were still hungry. Your voice, you're the voice and uh, you're the voice. Try and understand it. Make a noise and make it clear. <laughs> uh, but they were still hungry. As they crept back into the woods, they found the stalwart moose. Have I heard that song? It's a song? I mean, I figured it was a song, but I don't recognize the lyric, no. Uh, crept back into the woods, they found the stalwart moose. Watching them, did you just steal the big frog's food? The goblins tried not to look guilty, but failed. She said we could have them, they cried. Oh, really? said the moose. Let's ask her. So moose woke up big frog and asked, did you say the goblins could have your food? The big frog looked at the goblins, who she knew was always hungry, and nodded. Yes, I did. Really? asked the moose, surprised. Frog nodded, and the moose sighed. All right, then, he said, and he had to let the goblins go. He's acting quite a bit like a police officer. This moose. Like Eddie. Their next stop was the river. They watched as Old Bear swiped at a leaping salmon catching it uh, deftly in his large paws. Uh, he lay it out upon a rock and left it to dry, lumbering into the woods to seek out some berries. Uh, the crafty goblins... Uh, the crafty goblins crept up to the rock, carefully in case Old Bear returned. They reached the rocks, grabbed the salmon, and gobbled it all up, but they were still hungry. As the <laughs> not me in my head go uh, having Gollum go, little pool is nice and cool, so juicy, sweet. Uh, anyway, as they crept back into the woods, the stalwart moose was once again waiting for them. Are you going to tell me old bear said you could have that? Yes, repi uh, replied the goblins. Old bear ambled up at that moment, and moose asked him, Did you leave that fish for the goblins? Old Bear looked at the goblins, who he knew were always hungry, and nodded. I did, he said. Really? asked the moose. Really? said the old bear. After moose left, Old Bear said to the goblins, Be sure to tell the princess I was kind to you, and don't steal my fish again. The goblins, still hungry, went out looking for one more meal. You're the voice by John Farnham. I will try to remember to look it up. Thank you. Um, went out looking for one more meal. The goblins, still hungry, went out looking for one more meal. They crept up to the mangy muskrat's lodge and began to climb inside when they were dragged right back out. The stalwart moose dangled them by the seats of their pants and said, Now I know mangy muskrat didn't tell you that you could eat his food because he blames you for his coat being ruined. Besides, he barely has enough for himself and doesn't share with anyone. The goblins began to protest, but he shook his head. He set the goblins down and said, come with me. The goblins followed the stalwart moose to a part of the river where, he, where it ran slow enough for them to walk into it safely. He gave them each a fishing line and said, I'm going to teach you to fish so that when you are hungry, you do not need to steal from the animals of the forest. It will be hard work, but it will be honest. The crafty goblins were not against working hard. They were just hungry. And so they listened to moose and soon pulled wiggling fish out of the river. They ate them up, and finally they were no longer hungry. And that is how the moose came to teach the crafty goblins to fish. Yeah, that's definitely Eddie. You done? Yeah, she's... De Pelican's definitely Tessa. Moose is definitely Eddie. Bear is definitely Sam. All right, I think I'm done. You sure? How do you like them apples? You know, I think you might be onto something. What about these guys? I don't see them being real life people, or this one. 
The hunter. Yep, totally Marianne. Why a princess, though? Why not a queen? She hated authority. Yeah, she'd have been a terrible ruler. Yep. The specific human attributes you have assigned to these forest animals are truly thought-provoking. Indubitably. You better hurry, or the Mad Hunter will catch us! We need to hide. This way! <gasps> what's... what's going on? I... I don't know. I, is he here? Is he really here? I'm scared. Go away! Yeah! Go back to the forest! That fucking grin, though. I forgot about that. We've been pretending he was there. And then, suddenly he was. That was the only time that happened, right? Allison? Wait. It felt way too real. It was... Us. Pushing our imagination way too far. Great. Hello? Sam Kansky, Grandmaster of Bad Timing. We're not done with this conversation. Morning, Sam. Well, hi, goblins. Right, the mad Landed grin. Chief Brown, who said you were starting the cleanup on the house this morning, so uh, I kind of figured you might need some supplies. That's. Thank you. That was very, very kind fun. of you, old bear. Oh, uh, also got something for you, Tyler. Every man needs a good knife. There you are. Thank Aww. You. Good. Good. Yeah. Oh, and before I forget, for the lady of the house. Especially after how he was drunk last your chapter. Your favorite recipe. Still make it darn near every week. Thank you for every time. Uh, thanks. But we don't have a stove. Still no electricity. Oh, yeah. The fuse box is busted. <laughs> Just another thing I've been meaning to put back together around here. Where is it? I can take care of it. Oh, I don't doubt you can. But, uh, I've been kicking this thing back to life for the last 20 some years. I'll give you a hand. All right. Boxes in the barn. Follow me. We'll be right behind you. Good old bear. Well, I get on just a second. So read that one, read that one, read that one, read that one, read that one. Um, let's see here. There's one, two, three, four. <laughs> Twenty of these, and I've read one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Nine. I've read nine of them, so I'm almost halfway through them. Uh, we'll read a few more in a, in a bit. Um. Actually, let's go ahead and read The Princess and the Two Thieves.
And then the uh this No, no, we'll do this. <laughs> yep. Come on. Let's go get our electricity back on. Old bears can learn new tricks. All right. All right, time for me to go wandering around away from the objective like a proper video gamer. <laughs> Time to go the wrong direction. Is Tyler following me? No, just watching me going, Allison, where are you going? <laughs> it's revenge. It's revenge for last week where you where Tyler was the one wandering around everywhere. We should pick up some seed for the birds. There was some seed and I just forgot to put it out here for them. Uh, and I bet there was an achievement if I got it, you know? Oh, well, if I'd done it, I mean. Come on, Sam's waiting for us. Oh, it won't let me go around the house. Fine. Staring like that's not the main objective. Stairs in video game NPC. <laughs> so, um, how's school? I graduated already. Outdoor studies. Oh, outdoor studies. Didn't know they taught that stuff in schools. There's a pretty long list of degrees these days. Like, well, oh, it's a good thing I came along when I did. You know what? Built this here barn for your mama. You really helped her out, huh? Uh, you know, just a few chores here and there. I was, I was glad to help. Your mother, she... I can never bring myself to leave her high and dry. Anyways, I'm gonna find that door key. Great. I'll take that. Well, I, uh... Figured I might still need to do some maintenance, so uh Nope. We're good. Thank you. Uh, oh. Fair warning. Door's a bit temperamental. Haven't you been taking care of this place? You didn't oil the doors? What? You think I just hang out here all day or something? I mean yes. Here, son, give me a try. Good. Okay, when you twist it as far as you can to the left, give it a nice little jerk. <clears throat> Damn it. Well, no oh, shit. Well, at least the door is open now. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, that's easy enough to fix. Now, that fuse box. Oh, no, no, no. You and you are going to clean up your mess. I'll take care of the fuse box. But I didn't do it. I'm not asking. Go on. This is a garage, and they call it a barn. Hey, let's take a look. Look at what? The whole jam needs to be replaced. Nah, need to sand that part down. Could refinish Absolutely. Thing, but that's a lot of work for an old door. The hash sing slinging slasher. Well. All right. Okay. Let's go into plugs. Should be easy enough. Mary and I wrapped up your electrical board. I gotta run, but in case you want to check it out, careful not to overload the circuits. You'll have to use 15 amp fuses for the garage. Amps total up to 120 amp for the for the whole house. P.S. Pretty proud of myself. For once, I res I've respected the right color coding. Each fuse should have the right color cable. Okay, so 50 amp fuses total up to 120. Okay. Water heater, kitchen, outlet, lights, main range, heater, garage. 
Okay. Uh... Okay, so that's main, that's range. That must be heater, and that must be garage, that one down there. Okay. So we've got yellow, orange, and red stripe, and blue. All right, hold on. Water heater, kitchen, outlet, lights. All right. So this is the... Generator heater. Uh, totals up to... Hmm. Okay, so first off, let's do kitchen. Uh... Wait. No. Okay. So the 30 is the red. Let's try this one. And then I bet 20 is the yellow. Yeah. And then that. And then that. Hmm. Seems good. As far as fuse puzzles go, that one was the most straightforward. There's the shotgun that Marianne went after them with, uh, Tyler with. You damn fool. Everything okay? You, uh, you two look like you got this all in hand, so, um. <sighs> Poor guy. Poor old bear. Bye. What was that about? It was probably the shotgun he gave her to defend herself. What are we going to do with this? And I say that because if we go to the princess's party, uh... She got a torch, a magic sword, and a bag of coins. The bag of coins, if I remember correctly, were from the pelican. The torch was from the moose, and the sword was from the bear. And I bet the magic sword is the shotgun. So I bet that party is where she got the shotgun, which means I bet she got the shotgun from old bear. Take it apart and sell the scrap. Be my guest, but it sure looks like a pile of junk to me. Where you see junk, I see dollars. Found Marianne's stash. Blueberry, blueberry, salmonberry. Huh. Birch and fireweed? <laughs> Bet it tastes like restricted freedom and 9 p.m. lights out. <laughs> Those have definitely gone bad. As far as I'm concerned, they always were. Does canned food really expire? Sometimes. I mean, it's airtight, right? Uh, it depends. I'm not going to be the one to test that out. It depends. If it has a date on it, yes. If it doesn't, then not necessarily. Hey there, little buddy. <laughs> Are you cooing at a spider? It had better be a tiny one. Don't listen to the mean lady. You're an eight-legged beauty. Yeah, I'm not going to go look. Oh, man. Huh, I'm going to put together this. the sweetest toolbox ever. I think this ever. is where she made all her toys. She was so crafty. And she could draw and write and take pictures. She could have been an artist instead of just locking herself up out here. Toilet paper tubes, rope, cardboard. Maybe a car, ooh, or a tank. Yeah, 
There's all the critters. Allison, do you know who this is? I bet that's what old Beaver. Find? Do you know who that is? Uh, yeah. That's Carol, Eddie's mom. I've seen other pictures of her, but never this one. Man, look at Brown. And Marianne. She looks really happy. Can I? Careful, the glass is Ow. broken. Are you okay? It stings. Let's go see Mom. But she'll get mad. You weren't even supposed to be here. She said not to disturb her and Eddie. Where are you going? Things were different when she was around. We were family, Eddie. How could you do this to me? Shh. Look. I had to make that call. What were they talking about? I can't figure out what's going on. I don't know, but... I remember that whatever Eddie had to do, whatever that call was about, it was tearing him up. Tearing him up? He was being a total cop, and Marianne got pissed and threw him out. Here, I'm gonna show you what I remember. There, by the house. I had to make that call. I was just following the law. Oh yeah? And this little visit right here? What would the law say about this, huh? Look, I didn't have to come out here, but I did. You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here! Marianne... <sighs> I said get out! Out! Honestly, they're both probably right. What? She didn't throw the picture at him. You sure about that? He was being a complete dick. How can you be sure? We were eavesdropping. We could barely see a thing. What do you think happened then? Look. I had to make that call. I was following procedure. What I'm legally required to do. Then why are you here? Pretty sure this isn't procedure. I wanted you to hear it from me. Mary Ann, I'm sorry. Please just go. Ooh. How do we keep remembering the same thing so differently? It was a long time ago, and, well, memory's a tricky thing. Wait, when did that happen? I, I'm not sure. I think it was the exact same day she attacked you. That's what I thought. Uncle Eddie said he hadn't seen Marianne for weeks. Yeah, that was bullshit. And what was all that about following the law? What was he doing here exactly? I don't know. I have no idea. We shouldn't jump to any conclusions. Look, I know he took care of you. But that doesn't make him incapable of lying. I can't see him being that cold with Marianne. Even if he was being a cop. I mean... I can, but who knows? I guess memory is a tricky thing, huh? <sighs> Get out! You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here! Get out! Get out! You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here! You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here! Get out! 
I'm trying to make some connections. I have a theory that the Mad Hunter is some is someone from Marianne's past, like her father or something like that, or maybe the uh, the twins' father. Assuming Eddie is not the father. Um, and I feel like something happened that Cop Eddie was required by law to do, and he made a call. that had to do with the kids and Marianne. And he came to tell her to give her warning. Before that, whoever that Matt, whoever the mad hunter uh, represents showed up to uh, come after her. And that's why she was loading the shotgun that night. And scared Tyler and Allison. So I'm trying to decide which of these two, from what we know about Marianne and Eddie, which of these two most likely... You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah, that's true, Em. You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out. Last time Tyler's memory was right. Get out of here. So I'm gonna stick with Tyler's memory. You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here. Get off my property right now. It's possible that Marianne did react angry to him in that way, but it does depend on the context. So, we agree. Brown came out here and bullied Marianne the same day she attacked us. I don't think he bullied and her. And then lied about it. But he did lie and about it. We go and get a straight answer from him. Right now? Yes. I'll go get my car keys. But what will these mountains of Tell trash me do without why? us? Ain't Fuck nothing trash. but a heartache. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a mistake. Tell me why. Uh, I'm doing all right. Game is sad. Sad game is sad. I can't believe Bron lied. I mean, I mean, uh, he good to see you, Matt. Fan, but he's always talking about the truth and the law and shit. Do you have to be so happy about it? What? I know you've been waiting for something like this. Something that proves Eddie's an asshole. But gloating about it is really not cool. Mm. It's Tina. I, I gotta take this. Yeah, J just a sec. I'm parking the car. Smart choice, especially on those roads. Guess I'll just go stretch my legs then. No, just give me a sec. Okay, Tina, what's going on? Hi, hon. I've got someone who is super interested in seeing the house. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, when? They're just in the area for a couple of days, so they'd like to come by day after tomorrow. I bet it's oh. the old man from the uh, ferry. I'm not sure it'll be ready. Motivated. 
but I know he's looking at other properties. It's not like you've had people breaking down the door. I appreciate that, but we've kind of got a lot going on over here. Did I mention it would be an all-cash offer? Oh. Oh, man. It's, it's not the right time. I'm sorry, but it'll be a total mess. I don't want to waste anyone's time. Okay. Well, you tell me when you're ready. Huh. Well, I think I just made Tina's shit list. All cash is sus, in my opinion. God, I'd love to be able to make something like this. In a few weeks, you'll be able to climb to the top of that waterfall with an ice pick. Whose votes are you looking to win out here, Tom? The Bears? Valid. D and I did that trail a couple years ago. We drank ice cold beers when we reached the summit. Tell me why. Warning, bear encounters are frequent during salmon run. Exercise extreme caution along all rivers, local trails, viewpoints, and glacier roads. During autumn, bears move to higher elevation to feed on berries and den for the winter. Do not feed the bears. Keep all foods properly stowed and contained. Stay alert. Learn to spot fish and game carcasses and scavengers. Make noise while hiking. Bears don't like surprises. Never hike alone. Always carry pepper spray when hiking. Always, or in case of encounter, do not run. Stand your ground, wave your arms, and talk loudly. Do not climb trees or poles. Bears are extremely efficient climbers. In case of violent attack, fight back vigorously. You hear that, everybody? Keep that in mind in case of ever, uh, you're ever facing down a bear. The artist really nailed this one. Dorian Key. Kind of rings a bell. Yeah, Dorian Key. I wonder. Black bear or brown bear? Looks like you found No, an M bear. An M bear. That's 100% how you react when you encounter a, a, a brown an M bear. You've been here before, right? I feel like I've been here before. So, Tina? Tina West, our realtor. Oh, that Tina. What'd she need? She had someone who wanted to see the house, but he could only come by day after tomorrow. And you told her no? Yeah. We need more time than that to get things cleaned up and, you know. Thanks. But what if it's the only call we get? And I guess we just grow old and lose our minds in that fucking house. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <sighs> so, Fuller Tina called, we were talking? Yeah. I'm not happy your foster father fucked up. Oh yeah? Because you sure sounded he like it. He hid information about Marianne. I know! You just don't have to rub it in. I get it. You're always gonna side with him over me. Come on, that's not fair. Then why do you keep doing it? This town, these people, they're just memories to you. But it's my home, Tyler. My friends, my family. 
And as much as I want answers, I'd rather not lay waste to my entire life to get them. I didn't come here to ruin your life, Allison. I just want some answers. I know. That's why we're doing all this, right? Our hometown looks pretty picturesque from here, doesn't it? You're way more attached to this place than you let on. So, you really want to live somewhere super secluded like this? Alone in a cave, speaking for the trees? I do. Is it really that hard to imagine? I just don't think of you as a loner. You and I always did everything together. <laughs> well, you're way less terrible than other people. Valid. And yeah, M, you forgot that advice. It's okay, you don't need that advice. Being M Bear. You feeling that, Ty? Yeah. Found you, North Star. Okay. Now, you're the star, and I'm the compass. Okay, and don't cheat. I know you were sending me fake hints last time. I did not. Yes, you did. Okay, okay, I won't do it again. Exactly. You were always accusing me of cheating. Because you totally did. It was a cool game. Guessing where you were just by feeling what you felt. No one else could play it with us. That was the beauty of it. For real? You never wanted any other friends? No, not really. I mean, we had each other. That was enough for me. So, not too disappointed I turned down our chance to be billionaires? Nah, all that money would have made me soft. And I've spent way too many years polishing my edgy side. <laughs> you were right to call me out earlier. I was being a jerk about Eddie. I'm all for enjoying the wins as they come. But maybe not at the expense of my father figure. I'll try my best. So I have to warn you. I'm not sure we're getting any answers out of Eddie. You won't have a choice. We're not 10 years old anymore. He'll probably say he's too busy to talk. That's how he tends to avoid conflict. We're not looking for conflict, just answers. <sighs> Let's be honest. Lately, that's been pretty much the same thing. I haven't been trying to pick fights. You know that, right? I just want closure, that's all. I know. I really love I Tyler's jacket, too. the design on it. <clears throat> hey, look what I found. Oh, uh. aha. I knew it was still here. I knew we'd been here before. We claimed it as part of the Ronin Kingdom, and it still is. All it needs is a little update. From OA to OT, or A to TA. What are you doing? Uh, what I wanted to do back then, but I didn't have the guts. There, looking better already. You're right, way better. A-T-T-A. Uh, T-A, yeah.
So, what's the plan? We go inside and calmly ask Eddie why he was there that day. All right. Let's try to let him get his <clears throat> side of the story out. Okay. <laughs> OTA. Uh huh. Oh yeah. I oh, understand, Mr. Barrow. I'll be sure to let him know. Yes, I have it all written down. Have a good day, Mr. Barrow. Good morning, Missy. How do you get stuck working reception? Rose called in sick this morning. I'm covering for her while I try to get my paperwork done. What are you doing here? Just checking in with Uncle Eddie. I'm guessing from the identical features that this is Tyler. Tyler, Denise, Denise, Tyler. What's up? Wilson. I'm nosy. Could you tell Officer Vincenzi that I'll be... Oh, good morning, Allison. Hi, Uncle. I'm going to take Dr. Torres' statement. No need for Vincenzi to come back to the station. He doesn't seem like he's in the best of moods. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but he's been a little off all day. Good luck. Great. He has an excuse to brush us off. Hey, he speaks. How's Delos treating you so far? It's been good to see Allison. <laughs> she's been talking nonstop about you lately. I know she's happy to have you here. Hey, been meaning to say, Allison showed us that article you wrote for the Juno Daily last year. You were spot on. The state needs to be giving way more money to youth centers. Fireweed was lucky to have you. Thanks. I spent a lot of time fighting for more outdoor activities. Made some enemies in the administration over that one. But the first time those kids summoned Mount Roberts, man, they were so proud. It felt great. I know exactly what you mean. I, um, volunteer sometimes with the JCE. I give lectures about police work, lead group talks when I can. JCE? You know, Juno Coalition for Equality. Oh. Oh. Wait, really? That's awesome. Yeah, and I don't mean to preach, but the kids in those groups be it Fireweed or the JCE, they need people who really understand them. People who know where they're coming from and will fight for what they need. Anyways, sorry for the rant. Oh, hello, kids. Hello, middle-aged adult. Everything all right? Your uncle said you uh, Chief Brown's taking a statement, statement but you might be able to snag him when he's done. Sorry, Tyler. Duty like calls. 213, this is dispatch. Out of thin air. Huh. You yeah. can turn that car around. Chief's going to take care of the distance. How is Linda? I feel like I haven't seen her in months. Good. She started working over at the high school's librarian. Pay's not great, but she gets to see the kids every day. I bet Brendan's thrilled. Oh, yeah. Happy as any teenager who's got to spend extra time with his mom. Well, I'll let you work. Eh, no worries. You're not a bother. Oh boy, fire drills. Everybody's favorite way to slack off. Hey, is that your desk? Huh? I didn't think so. Move on. Right. <laughs> Sorry. No, her father has primary custody. Because of my hours. She stays with me on the weekends. mailbox bandit or whatever they've been calling them mailbox killer All right. mailbox bandit yeah Incident right there on this called yesterday at right in front of me because someone vandalized your mailbox officer vincenzi was dispatched to your home at 8:29 a.m but you couldn't stay to give a statement um i had to be in surgery at nine i was already running behind Hey, we don't need anything up there. Come on. Fine. Fine. What's your usual working hours? I'm a surgical resident at one of the only hospitals in Crescent. 
I'm basically. I really have a lot on my plate. We'll yes, catch up later, though. Well, listen, we really appreciate you coming. Uh, Chief in. Brown's taking a statement, but you might be able to snag him when he's done. Did you need something? Yeah, okay. Else? Uh, yeah. Tyler, uh, can you come here? I'm right here. Morning, Chief Brown. Good morning, Tyler. Hey, could we talk to you in private? It's a little urgent. Can you excuse me for a second, Dr. Torres? What's going on, you two? We had a few more questions about her mother. Look, now's not the best time. Well, maybe we can come back later then? Excuse me. Come on. Guys, I'm understaffed today. I've got a receptionist out sick, an officer dealing with personal issues. I need to finish taking this woman's statement, and I don't have time to chat right now. We were just hoping for some answers. Well, I don't know what more you think I'm going to say. I already told you everything. I need to get back to this complaint. Sorry, guys. <coughs> oh, I hate when he's stubborn like that. So what now? Of course, Mr. Torres. Where were we? He's obviously not going to give us the truth. So I say we go get it ourselves. Where do you think they'd stash her file? I don't know. The archive room? Maybe Eddie's office? Wait, you're not seriously thinking of breaking and entering a police archive? Go big or go home. Could you go through the full details of your morning? <laughs> I woke up. Tyler Ronan. Good to see you again. You've gotten tall. That usually happens between ages 11 and 21. <laughs> Valid. Yeah, uh, well, uh, welcome home. And as we were eating, I realized I hadn't grabbed a name. Thanks. It's been a while. So, what brings you two around? So I helped him into a coat and boots. Neon lights and smelly food. Uh, we just can't get enough of the fluorescent lights and smell of old takeout. <laughs> oh, come on. It's not that bad. So is there anything I can help you with? My back was to it. Busy day around here? No. The fire alarm went off three times in the span of an hour this morning. <laughs> I thought the chief was going to rip that alarm right off the wall. All right. Thank you very much for the Tyler. lurk. Chief said you have a good rest of your night. Fireweed, huh? You ever think of joining the force? Gregs, we just got here. Yeah, I know, but we could use more people like him. What about you? I People like me. Well, yeah. You know, people with natural authority are you really trying to recruit my brother huh. and why not we're short-handed right now and <laughs> since you've shot down my offers i figured <laughs> i'd try the other ronin kid wouldn't hurt to lower the average age around here i guess valid now where was i in this report She's back ah right oh hey uh sorry tyler i better finish this or wilson has a conniption valid I'll let you get to work. Uh, let's see what Denise has to say. Denise? What's up? Allison told me about your dog. I'm sorry. Thanks, yeah. He was a good boy. Like, the best. So, how do you like being a cop? Must be kind of weird. Oh, yeah. But I know I do a lot of good here. And the team's great. Chief Brown, he gets it. Really? Mm-hmm. We hired this guy last year who kept asking me to get him coffee. Chief canned his ass that day. <laughs> wow. Way to go, Chief Brown. What about you? Any thoughts on the future? Well, I studied to be a park ranger, and I'm hoping to do a tour in Denali. Hey, you know, I have a cousin who works in Yosemite. If Denali doesn't work out, I could see if they have any openings for you. <laughs> You'd do that? Of course. As long as you don't make me sorry I offered. Thanks, Denise. That'd be amazing. How did you find out about the JCE? Same way anyone finds anything. The internet. It took a few months before I actually went to a meeting, though. 
Every time I thought about going, I chickened out. I can totally relate. Well, trust me when I say it was the right move. It is a wonderful, supportive community. Can't recommend it enough. See you around then. Yeah, back to the grind. We'll talk later, okay? Let's go upstairs, Tyler. Allison? Uh-huh? Glad to see you hanging around, but you know the drill. Right, right. Break room on that. Break room. Come on. I'm going to the break room. Fine, no break room. Hey, what are you two up to over there? Everything all right? Uh, yeah, everything's fine. We're just, uh, I was just telling Tyler where the upstairs bathroom is. Tyler, help me out here. Oh, uh, yeah. Toilet emergency, lake water, you know, mother nature's juice cleanse. There's a bathroom just past the break room. Behind you, first door on your right. Forget it, Tyler. There's no way we're getting upstairs out in the open like this. Too suspicious. There must be another way up. Uh, you know, Greg was talking about a fire drill earlier. Are there any kind of fire exits? Oh my gosh. Why didn't I think of that? Lobby, now. There's no access to the first floor this way. We need to find another way up. I want to go in. Fine. All right. Let's see. There. Fire exit. It opens up to a staircase on the side of the building, but it'll definitely be locked from the inside. If one of us were to create a diversion, the other could slip upstairs and open the door. And since you're the troublemaker, I nominate you as the one to make a scene. Wait, really? Not a better idea? Aren't cops, like, trained to notice suspicious behavior? I'm not exactly an amazing actor. Figure out something simple and commit. I have faith in you. Okay. Can I go get some coffee and spill it on Greg's? Oh, hey, uh, sorry, Tyler. I better finish this or Wilson has a conniption. That pile of paperwork? What about it? I could tip it over. It's kind of messy, but... Sure? No, I'm not sure. I'm not certain. I could go get a cup of coffee and spill it on Greg's or on Eddie. Third degree burns for the cop. Uh, let's see what else pops up. Um, nope, nothing there. How about saying someone's climbing the fence? Really? I could pretend they're outside trying to break in. Uh, all right. Eh, uh, that doesn't sound valid. It would get them away from that direction, though. Maybe. Uh. What about those missing people posters? I can pretend I've seen someone. Yeah, sure. Might work. That one seems the most valid. Let's do that one. Huh. Officer, I, I think I saw her. I saw that girl. Oh, which one? Stella Reyes. I'm positive I saw her when we stopped to get coffee on the way in from Juno. At Tommy's, right off the Marine Highway. Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't think that was her name. Stella Reyes's body was found about 50 miles south of Anchorage a couple weeks ago. Oh, man. Damn. Oh, girl. Yeah, I, uh, forgot to take that poster down. I'm sorry. Tyler. I tried! Turn the lights on. Just go. Improvise. <coughs> I'm gonna try the lights. Oh, oops. Tyler. 
Well, it worked. Sorry. <laughs> I've having actually done that, leaning back against a wall and accidentally flipped the switch. Turn right when you exit the station and follow the side of the building. The staircase will be right there. Like having actually done that is actually really easy to do. Yeah, I need a smoke. You should think about quitting. Only gets harder the longer you do it. Yeah, I know. While you're at it, get your sister to stop too. Both of us smoke. Interesting. I I knew that uh Tyler did. I knew that Tyler did because of the uh, referencing to weed and stuff. That would be Vincenzi. He's got a bike for every season. Names him too. What's this one called? Duncan Rocket. Staircase should be on the other side of the building. I'm exploring, Tyler. It's not that way. Curious slashes tires. Damn, by the car they drive. Ah, the love language of car people. Hey, which one's Brown's car? Why? I'm gonna say slashes tires. I was thinking of letting a little air out of his tires, you know, in case we can even frame for it. Ha ha. Damn. <laughs> Here's the bears one again. Ah, killed a bar. Gamer senses are tingling. Exactly. Gamer senses say explore everywhere other than the objection. It's Allison. Uh, is that supposed to be Greg's? Oh, yeah. Well, no one knows. Was that red warehouse part of the whole chicken farm business? You know it. It's a shooting range now. Uh, Interesting. Was that red warehouse part of the whole chicken farm business? You know it. It's a shooting range now. It's right behind me. Yes, it is. There's nothing there. But over here. Fire exit. Okay, right fine. 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 I'll go up, damn. Ooh. Shit. Hold on, I want to I want to be nosy. Denise is in the break room, chilling. Okay. Quick, get in. Oh god, what did I just do? You took control of your destiny. Own it. You guys are so lucky that door is not alarmed. So lucky that room is not alarmed. That door was not alarmed. Police chief of Delos Crossing hosts charity events. Huh? Oh, yeah, the community social. He volunteers to help. He thinks he pretty much knows everyone, and more importantly, these photo cops on him. He's in charge of the feeding truck. I bet he catches us in here. There's no turning back now.
Hey, Eddie, you'll find enclosed your invitation for the annual social. As usual, I've included a plus one on the chance that one day you'll use it. Cheers, Elliot. So we know Eddie was single. Well, actually, we knew that because if Eddie's the moose, then his uh, dearly beloved fell to her death off a mountain. Cordially invited to attend the 34th minute. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. And the seating chart. Let's put the Vecchies next to... Can you not? <laughs> Personnel files. Apartment budgets. Zero case files. Brown really wants everyone to know what a fine, upstanding citizen he is, doesn't he? He's a genuinely good person. And saying that here makes me feel even worse. Brown really wants everyone to know what a fine, upstanding citizen he is, doesn't he? He's a Looks like this is where Brown keeps all his personal mail. Well, I found that bug. One moment. Bug dead. Okay. Why is Brown on a first name <sighs> basis with the director of Fireweed? Oh. What'd you find? It's an invoice. Eddie Brown, you'll find and close the final invoice for resident Tyler Ronan. The Fireweed administration would like to thank you for all of the support you've given us over the years. More back doors and secret moves. Maybe he didn't want to make you uncomfortable. Well, now I feel like I'm in his debt. Maybe be a bit nicer to his face then. Looks like he's working with the Office of Child Services on the case. None of our business. You applied to a summer drama program back in 2009? I did. They rejected me. Michael and I were supposed to go together. He went, but I was stuck here for the summer with no one but Justin Bieber for company. Why? Well, uh, this letter says you got in. What the hell? So he just turned it down? I'm sorry, Allison. Shouldn't be surprised he's lied to me in the past. Damn. You finding anything? No. How old is Brown? Thirty-eight. Oh, wow. He graduated really young. Youngest officer to ever join the BCPD. All right. I think. Oh wait, no. There was some stuff on his desk. Huh. Dallas Police Force is getting a new officer. Finally. This guy has a record, and not a short one. Why is he even in the running? Shh. Eddie has a really hard time hiring people out here. I don't think he has a choice. There's always a choice. <laughs> Aw, look at you. Allison Ronan, perfect daughter. Can we stay focused, please? Trouble for actions of team, blah, blah, blah. Supervise construction of sandwiches. He might work. There's the moose figurine. Oh. Hey, you. Let's hear about that collectible. The stalwart moose, he's a kind and loyal animal. 
He always criticizes the goblins for their tricks, but he actually likes them. Oh. And so he took them in. Though we are destined to burn, we emerge as stardust. Was that? Oh no. <laughs> oh yes. Burn it. Burn it with fire. Though we are destined to burn, we emerge as stardust. Was that? Oh no. <laughs> oh yes. Burn it. Burn it with fire. <laughs> All right, I'm not seeing anything else, so allons-y. See if it'll let us into the armory. <laughs> nope. Damn. Oh boy. If he just looked up right now, he would see me. Is there more that I can look at? Nope. Okay. Look at that. Are you sure you checked all the emails? Oh, emails. Fuck, you wanted me to hack his computer? Yeah, that, that would work. From T. Arbor, T. Vecchi, E. Brown, APCC, and D. Wilso. <laughs> Regarding Nacho Mama. Uh, let's start with T. Wow. Arbor. Brown looked at our file this morning. Wait, what? What does that mean? I don't, I don't know. But there's a reference number. R68653. Hasn't been digitized yet. Uh, so you can find the paper originals in the archives for other references about the case transcripts of phone calls have been taken out. But you can find the digitized calls through the appendix. Let me know if you need anything else. Thomas Arbor. Okay. Huh. Tom invited Eddie over for dinner? Oh, yeah. Uh, he's been trying way too hard to get Eddie's endorsement. Does he? Support Tom? He preferred staying neutral. Valid. Police chief should. Uh, good morning, Chief Tessa, and I would love to have you over for dinner on Thursday night, and I know you cannot say no to her roasted salmon. I didn't catch it myself, but it's this morning's catch. Looking forward to seeing you. Thomas Vecchi, Venny, Venny Vitti Vecchi, Tom Vecchi for mayor. Implicit bias training. Good morning, everyone. Please remember your presence is required Wednesday, November 11th at 1300 hours. I need us all there, so speak now if you can't attend, and I'll reschedule. As I said this morning, we'll be talking about implicit bias. This is not a punishment and has nothing to do with the dismissal of Randy Spears. We all can benefit from this discussion no matter who we are. I've attached some reading material we'll be discussing and am avail and am available if there are any questions. From the city uh, city council event reminder, we would like to remind you of your upcoming council meeting on Saturday, November fifth, twenty fifteen, ten a.m. at the Juno City Council event room. Uh, we look forward to seeing you there. From D. Wilson, Nacho Mama. Uh. Hit reply all, Sherlock. Oops. Man who pissed in her cereal this morning. Okay, so from 
Malevar at DelosCrossingPD.org. Subject, Nacho Mama. People, we are all adults here. Whoever keeps leaving dirty dishes in the sink better learn to clean after themselves, or I will personally stuff said culprit into the washer so they can see how it works. Sincerely, Maria Olevar. Dealers Crossing Police Department. From Greg's to Vincenzi and all. Man who pissed in her cereal this morning. You hit reply all, Sherlock. <laughs> Oops. One of his emails mentioned the archives. That's gotta be where our file is. Alright. Rest room. Private. Please tell me you know what the code is. The confidential police archive? Then how am I supposed to open the door? I spent hours playing next to this room. I see people go inside all the time. The keypad does this little tune. Dum da dee do. Seriously? Oh, Dum da dee do. That is. That is a. Uh, Four digit code. So O one six four. That was a D. Oh. I don't think that's the right order. Oh. How did that tune go again? Dum da, Dum -da -dee -do. dee do. Okay, so four I is. Da. Dumb. So six. Six zero four one. Gee, only twenty four different possibilities. No, there's a lot more than that with a four digit combination on a nine digit com a combo pad. Okay, so it's dumb. Six zero. Do. Yes. For the record, that's not how that works. In most instances. Uh, looks like they're finally going digital. Oh, that's right. I remember Eddie complaining <clears throat> about this. They're gonna have to resort everything. Great. They've digitized their closed files, but only the ones before 1990. Meaning? Meaning our file is still somewhere in those boxes. Perfect. A room of scattered case files and a half-done sorting system. Yep. This is gonna be so fun for you. I'm gonna go keep a lookout. I knew what? she was gonna say that. Why do I have to be the one stuck with box duty? The wink! Because the wink! If sees me, I'll have a better excuse for being there. Reach out if you need anything. R68653. Look it up. Look it up, she says. Okay. Nope. Not this one either. No, that's not it. Nope. Well... This one either. No, that's not it. You finding anything? Hmm. What was that reference number again? Zero five R sixty eight six fifty. Zero five. Nope. Zero five R six. Or 
we sure it's not this one? Not this one either. Uh, where's the damn box? Well, give me a second. Oh wait, there it is. Here we go. Okay. 2235, notified my, uh, by my partner, Christian, Officer Christian Holt of Accident at 12 Cannery Road, Delos Crossing. White female identified as Marianne Ronan, falling over deck into lake. Audio recorded tape. Uh, Holt and I arrived at the scene, briefed by Patrol Officer Jay Chan. Uh, located witnesses, minor's name redacted, Ronan, and minor's name redacted, Ronan. Uh, children of Marianne Ronan couldn't get a statement from them as they were under dire stress and shock. The children were taken under care of police officer, of uh, patrol officer Jay Chan. Coroner investigation arrived at scene, rolled prints of victim. Completed photographs of seen and recovered an unlicensed wrestler shotgun bullets recovered from location in the barn. Well, so far I've not seen anything we didn't know already. It does reference some other files and audio recordings though. You might be able to look those up on the computer. Even if our file hasn't been digitized yet, they may already have it in the appendix. Coroner took possession of body, cleared scene, interviewed children at station, stated at, that after blank Ronan's hair was cut short by sister blank Ronan, Marianne Ronan threatened blank Ronan with a gun. When minor Ronan fled from her, she pursued child to docks. Blank Ronan stabbed Marianne Ronan, who was still threatening the child before falling over into the water. Witnesses state they called 911 shortly after. Uh, canvas crime scene did not recover pair of scissors claimed by minor's name redacted Ronan. Presented the case of DAB Cruz, charged minor name Ronan with homicide. Personal information and rap sheet. References 05 R62 766. And R61. I need to check out 05 R61 889. Okay, so R61. And R62. References 05 R62 766. R61? Oh. Oh, I have to. Okay, I see what you're wanting me to do. Alright, so R62. Uh, R5. 
five to. Okay. Dead on arrival post drowning. She was 42. Stabbed. One stab wound. Uh, bloody froth seen in mouth and nose. Cerebral edema. Waterlogged lungs. See pulmonary edema and uh, emphysema. Aquosum. Extended stomach, two degrees to fluid content, three inch clean stab wound left, uh, left loin one inch above pieces, appears antemortem. 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 Is before death. Postmortem, antemortem, and okay. On CT, fluid in paranasal sinuses and trachea, bilateral uh, pleural effusions, blood work, evidence of fresh water inhalation, diffuse uh, stuff, other conditions contributing but not related to the immediate cause of death. Homicide. If other than natural causes, how did injury occur? With scissors, victim then fell over dock into... Freezing lake water. Was operation performed for any condition stated above? Yes. No. no. Technician S. Sylvia witnesses to autopsy. Eddie Brown. 15 centimeter stab wound, non fatal. Death by drowning. Body tag, clothing, x ray. Med re record. Okay, so at scene photos typing blood taken by SS source uh, right back toxicology no blood embalmed greater than 24 hour in hospital decomposed other specimens collected by MG and SS heart blood femoral blood urine sorts are regular. one screen oh that's fuzz uh talk screen alcohol screen uh she was positive which means she had alcohol in her system and or some other toxicology so she was probably drunk which would explain a few things. Or drugged. Which would also explain some things. Okay, we did that one. Let's do this one. Uh, 05R61. I need to check out 05R61889. There it is. <laughs> Crime reports. Victim, Marianne Ronan, Caucasian, female, 5'6", 138 pounds, 41, July 8, 1964. Driver's license number, foreign language spoken, none. Occupation, unemployed. Location of occurrence, uh, date and time of occurrence, date and time reported to PD. Uh, on dock at Lakeside, victim threatened her child with a gun. Child stabbed her with a pair of scissors. Victim subsequently fell into the lake. Reporting employees, initials, last name, serial, blah, blah. E. Brown, C. Holt. Uh, mind evidence report. Item one, quantity one, article shotgun. Rassler shotgun. Nine millimeter. 
Miscellaneous dark wood. Found a summary of everything. Wow, this is a real detective novel. Brown's quite the wordsmith. He's not a writer, Tyler. Crime summary. On March 1st, 2005, at around 2200, the victim Marianne Brown, or not Brown, Ronan, a 41-year-old white female exited her home and entered her garage to start loading a Rassler 3121 9mm shotgun. Shortly after, her child, minor's name redacted, Ronan, 11 years old, entered the garage to display a new haircut given by sister, minor's name redacted, Ronan. According to witness, minor's name redacted, Ronan's statement, uh, when she saw the child's haircut, Marianne became enraged and threatened Miner's name redacted Ronan with shotgun. Miner's name redacted Ronan fled the garage towards the lake, calling for help. Marianne followed, still armed, out onto the dock on the southern side of the property. Hearing the noise, witness Miner name uh, Miner's name redacted Ronan also came out of the house towards the dock where she observed Miner name redacted Ronan under threat from Marianne defend themselves by stabbing mother with a pair of scissors at that time both witnesses state Ma Marianne Ronan lost consciousness and fell into the lake at 22:29, Delos Crossing Police Department officer Christian Holt received a phone call from minor's name redacted Ronan detailing the incident patrol officer Jake Chan was dispatched to the scene upon arrival they set up a containment of the scene began a crime scene log and started tending to both juveniles um, see, see their statements for further description on March 1st 2005 officer Christian Holt notified his partner officer Eddie Brown by telephone of the incident before being dispatched to the scene investigation Holt and Brown arrived at the scene at 2258 hours they noted the crime scene was located entirely outdoors Cannery Road is a secluded road mostly comprised uh, uh, comprised of a few residential cottages detectives observed a loaded Rassler shotgun on the dock no rounds had been discharged they directed forensic personnel to recover items. Detectives were di were directed to witnesses. Uh, Manor name redacted Ronan stated that she heard screaming while she was upstairs in her bedroom. She ran down the stairs and looked over the kitchen window and saw her sibling and their mother, Marianne, on the docks. Marianne was threatening her child with her gun. Miner's name redacted tried to run away, but Marianne threatened that she was going to shoot. According to both witnesses, she stated, I'm going to kill you. Miner name redacted Ronan then stabbed Marianne Ronan with a pair of scissors trying to escape. Marianne Ronan then fell into the water unconscious. Okay. <clears throat> T. Vecchi theft report and child neglect report. On January 31st, 2005, two months before this happened. Oops, wrong button. References 2005-201-546. Okay, here it is. What the hell? That's a huge amount of child neglect. <coughs> According a location of occurrence uh, approved by store shoplifting associated persons person reporting Tessa Vecchi. Street name. Uh, but, um... <coughs> Narrative. 
On January 1st, 2005, at approximately 10.45 hours, Marianne Ronan entered Vecchi, uh, Veni Vetti Vecchi owned by Thomas and Tessa Vecchi. Mrs. Vecchi stated that she observed Ronan browse the aisles for approximately 10 minutes. While chatting distractedly with her, Ms. Mrs. Vecchi stated that she was behind the cash register and did not have a direct eye contact on Ronan at all times. Vecchi stated that after those 10 minutes, Ronan asked, if, uh, asked Vecchi if she had any organic mosquito incense in stock. Vecchi informed Ronan that she did not, but stated she believed this demand was odd due to the winter season. Ronan then left without purchasing anything else. Vecchi stated that after approximately five minutes, she walked back through the aisle where Ronan had been and discovered a, mixing box, a missing box of detergent. <coughs> Vecchi states that she had very recently restocked the shelves and no one else had been in the store that morning. Vecchi stated that she had suspected Ronan of shoplifting before in the past, notably while in the company and possibly with the aid of Ronan's two children. Vecchi stated that she also had reason to suspect Ronan to be guilty of child neglect. <coughs> they don't eat and are exposed to all kinds of inappropriate influences. Vecchi believed it possible some form of abuse may be occurring in the home. References 05R63325. R6305R63. R6, I remember seeing that. Where did I see that? temporary detention or, de or placement in the superior court for the state of alaska uh in the matter of extended placement of minors name redacted a minor under 18 years of age uh having found probable cause to support the pending petition or the minor having been determined delinquent or in violation of a probation co uh, slash conduct agreement court finds by a pre a preponderance of the evidence that detention or placement outside the home of a parent or guardian is necessary to protect the minor or others. It is ordered that the minor is committed to custody of the Division of Juvenile Justice for detention in a locked or secure facility such as Fireweed Residential Center for Troubled Youth. DJJ has discretion in to release the minor without, for, uh, without further court order. Uh, other orders... Uh, the above is supported by the oral findings entered on record and contained in the clerk notes or as otherwise noted below order for detention or placement recommended on blah 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 I certify that on a copy of this order was sent to okay I need to get moving shit I'm sorry Tyler I couldn't stop him He's coming your way. Get out. Uncle, I... 
We didn't mean I'm to- I'm not gonna repeat myself. You're a goddamn hypocrite. I said move it! Hey, hey! Get off me! Rather spend the night here? Come on! I said don't fucking touch me! Go on! And consider yourselves lucky your family. You're right. Family. And for Allison's sake, we should talk. About what? We saw our file. We know about social services. Why? Why did you turn your back on her? Why did Tessa? Okay. Yeah. You're right. We need to talk. The winter before your mother's death was hard. <coughs> Devil's Crossing was snowed in for months. Most roads were closed and plane supplies were scarce. Everyone was struggling. Especially Marianne. Yeah. She was always just scraping by. And that winter left nothing to scrape up. Even if locals had found time to help her. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure your mother would have accepted. saying Tessa reported our mother because she was having supply issues? Tessa came to me because she was honestly concerned. <laughs> right. I was legally required to report Tessa's complaint, even if I didn't agree. So you took her word for it and called child services? Failure to provide adequate food, lack of appropriate supervision, Inattention to a child's psychological care? Like it or not, she had a case. What? It's bullshit. Just following the law then. Right. Is that why you came over that day, before she died? You felt shitty, didn't you? That's why you broke procedure? I had to warn her that it was happening and that it wasn't looking good. An assessment worker had been assigned and started doing background checks. What else was I supposed to do? The background checks were what caused the whole thing. I thought always telling each other the truth was our number one rule. Still is, little moose. And yet you still lied. I didn't want you two putting yourselves through unnecessary hurt. But you're adults and that was your choice to make. I'm, I'm truly sorry. Thank you, Uncle. Just like that, huh? Must be nice to have a daughter who lets you off the hook that easy. Eddie, you keep trying to point your finger at Tessa, but you have to take responsibility for your part in our mother's death. I've asked myself over and over for the past 10 years what I could have done different. I know I made a big mistake with you two here. And you've got every right to be angry. Being a father, well, it's a pretty tough job. I've tried my best. And I'd like to try my best with you too, Tyler, if you want it. Oh, shit.
I'm open to getting there. But it's gonna take some time before we're a big, happy family. I respect that. It's hard work rebuilding trust. But you've got a place here whenever you need it. Oh, he put the ring on! Oh! Group hug? Uh, no. <laughs> Too soon. And Matt, yeah, it, it got hella heavy, but to be fair, All right, I'm really... to to be fair, this game was already hella heavy. You just missed the first chapter. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> oh boy! No rest for the wicked, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm as wicked as it gets. <laughs> See you both later, Tyler. What's up? So uh, I saw the invoice from Fireweed. When you're going through my stuff. Yeah, you should. Right. I. Uh, we don't have to talk about it. Oh, uh, actually, no. I'm not gonna let you tough guy your way out of this. You didn't have to do that, but you did. And going to Fireweed was everything. So, thank you. Okay. The VOD is currently available on my okay, YouTube. Tyler, for welcome. free. I uh, feel like I owe you an apology. Oh yeah, what for? Breaking and entering? Invasion of privacy? Sorry. All the above. Up. Eh, don't worry about it. Apology accepted. Just don't ever fair, pull he didn't that give shit you, again. He didn't give you guys much choice. Well... See you around then? You know where to find me. Should we go? Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> I was gonna genuinely see if it would let me go back into the fucking archives. <laughs> okay, nothing over there. All right. That went better than I was afraid it would. Anybody gonna talk to me? Oh, you two hey. on your way out? Yeah, we've got stuff to do. You ready, Allison? Yep. Let's roll on. Well, don't be a stranger, Tyler. Sure. See you around. See you later. You kids be careful out there, yeah? All right. What happened out there? Oh boy. Hey, you know the drill. Chin up. Yeah. Chin up, stand tall. Atta girl. <sighs> I could use a beer. It's noon. Which means that by the time I drink one, it'll be afternoon. I can't be expected to enjoy my pulled pork sandwich without a cold one. Are we still on for lunch tomorrow? Yeah, sure. I'll text you. It's noon. <laughs> oh, wrong door. Around, Allison. Oh, yeah. See ya. Allison. What? You feel like shit. How can you tell? Because I feel like shit. What are we going to do about Tessa? Nothing. Look, we're not going to do anything. That's enough, Tyler. Talk to Tessa. Why? What are you looking for? What are you expecting her to say? I thought she loved us. Really? Chief Brown, is it true? Is she? Oh, my God. Children, I... Tessa. Tessa, you need to leave. One would say, indeed, ha noon. Right. Okay? You're going to be okay, I promise. Go home. You can't be here right now. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
Where is everybody? Tess has got to be around somewhere. I think I'm hearing something. Well, at least we know the entire world didn't vanish. But given who is here, we can't count out the rapture quite yet. I need to take a breather. I'm going to do a bit of shopping. You look for Tessa, okay? On it. I bet that old man that's talking to Michael right now, I bet he's the old, the, I bet he is connected to this somewhere because he keeps popping up, which is, I was suspicious of him, which is why I didn't, in the previous episode, I didn't have Tyler give his full name. But I think, I think, We could use some of that at the house. You walk right through. Yeah, that's not exactly legal. Hey, guys. I hope I'm not interrupting. Not at all. Oh, hey. Tyler, from the boat, right? Huh. We keep bumping into each other, don't we? What were you guys talking about? I don't think you'd be interested. Stripes candy? Never heard of it. Maybe I should pick up some for Allison? Let's knock on the door and then we'll talk to Michael. signatures it should have at least been enough to stall construction while we figure out our next move well why don't we schedule a meeting with the alaska wildlife foundation and try to get their support look harold i have to go okay he's we on the pick phone this up at the meeting oh, okay. i should be on my way over soon hello tyler can i help you Hey, I hope this isn't a bad time, but is Tessa around today? She had to step out for a family matter. This wouldn't be something I could help with, would it? Yeah, maybe, actually. Uh, we were over at the police station, and we took a look at Marianne's case file. <clears throat> okay. Why did Tessa come to the police station that night? She was looking for you two. To make sure you were okay. When she heard what happened, she was a mess. How exactly did she hear about it so fast? Can't remember who called, but you know how it is. No news travels faster than a secret. Everyone knew five minutes after Brown was on his way out. Tessa reported Marianne to social services. Did you know? Vaguely. But I didn't get involved. I didn't think I really had anything to add. You never thought to mention it? Well, no. I'm not sure how a thing like that would have come up. And I didn't want to rub salt in any wounds. Huh. How about when we were in the store yesterday asking about it point blank? That was between you and Tessa. I try to stay out of other people's affairs. Okay. Thank you. Look. I'm sorry if you felt resistance from people around here. 
to put it mildly. Allison, you know this better than anybody. But your mother's death left a scar on this community. Now, I won't claim we went through anything close to what you did, but it was a cruel reminder of the limits of trust. Well, if we want to get past the limits of trust, we all need to face what happened, which means being completely honest about it. We all want to find peace, kids. It's just harder for some people to talk about the past. Now, you let me know if you have any other questions, okay? Oh, I should have talked to him first. Oh, well. Yes? He said I should remind you not to be late for your meeting. So, don't be late. Uh, yep, yep. I'll be on my way in a minute. Uh, so, kids, was there uh, anything else you two wanted to talk to me about? Did you ever hear any rumors about our mother? Like, who our father might have been? I'm not exactly a rumor monger. Your mother was close to a few men, but whether they were your father, I couldn't say. But look, I... Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm sorry. I really have to go. Uh, Michael, could you finish up the storage room and then just uh, close up? Hey, sure thing, boss man. See you later. You two want to help a brother out, spend the afternoon here working for free? Why not? We came here to talk to Tessa and she's not here. Uh, she, she's at the cemetery uh, visiting her parents. Oh. Hey, tell you what. Why don't you guys help me close the store and then we can drive over together. I've been meaning to pay my uncle a visit. Can't we just wait for her to come back here? I, I'm not really excited about going there. Allison, we don't have to visit her grave. I'm going to start working in the storage room. Tyler, join me when you're done. Sure thing. Just give me a sec. Where'd that question about our father come from? Oh. I don't know. It was a weird thing to ask, I guess. Uh, hey, so you look less than thrilled with the plan. Yeah, like I said, I am not stoked to be going to the cemetery. I know, but I'll be there too. And Michael. I'm not sure I want to drag him into this. Hey, he offered. He wants to be there for you. <laughs> for me, huh? Well... We need to get the store closed, so go give him a hand. You sure you're going to be okay? Yes, so stop hovering. Yes, ma'am. I already counted there, but I just need you to double check a few things. It's not complicated. I've got this in the bag. Oh yeah? Because you're just that good, huh? I'm clowning. I don't even know where to begin. What do I do? Yeah, let's start with an easy one, all right? Go to the back of the room and uh, tell me how many cans of Molto Bene brand tomato sauce we have left. Aye, aye. Molto Bene. Is that the Meiji muskrat? The main 
Stingy Muskrat is a lazy, cowardly creature who spends most of his time lying around in the sun, cleaning his coat. Is that a picture of a priest with little hearts? Yeah, that's the hot priest who hosts Bible study with Tessa. And for the record, that was Allison's doing. She had a crush on him for ages, but he is very, very hot. Shit, yeah. I remember him from when we were kids. That's Father Batista. Yeah, he's got that silver fox thing going on now, see? Yeah, yep, I see it. Yikes, that's unsettling. Little stuffed Tom Veckies. Uh, let's go ahead and sit. Sit, sit. Tired already? Tired already? All right, let's see what else I can interact with. Uh... <sighs> the only processed food Marianne ever let us eat. She said they were her guilty pleasure. Uh, no, that's not it. Uh, no, that's not what Michael wanted. Molto bene. Uh, flower... no. You know, when you think about it, glass is really just tortured sand. Huh. Have you been sniffing the spray paint, Tyler? Me? Maybe. Don't judge me. Why am I standing here looking at this? Why are you standing here looking at it? I thought it might have been multi uh, uh tomato sauce. That's wood something. Uh, here we go. Molto bene. Hold on, let me count this. Okay, so that's two, four, eight. 12, 10. Like 12 no. cans? What do you mean like 12 cans? In the game of inventory, be accurate or be obsolete? Damn it. Well then, I guess it's 14. Four, six, Look, I'll eight. let that one slide just because it's you. Let's say you do on the next one. I need you to count the bottles of bleach for me. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Yes. And... Where are they at exactly? I thought you had this in the bag. Okay, I'll give you a hint. Tessa puts the heavy stuff near the door on the bottom shelves. All right, I think I can work with that. Bleach. I see six bottles. Six? All right. Not bad, Tyler. Not bad. Careful. They might give me your job. Oh, you can have it. Uh, what's next? Come here and help me with this. All right, let's see what else there is to mess with. Oh, I drank this at a party once. It did not end well. Oh, and is it still here? I mean, probably, but nothing I remember really makes sense, so. Yikes. Hey, you remember the ad for this? What was their slogan again? Huh. Something poetic about time travel and life being weird, I think. What's up? I need your opinion on this. It took me a second, but that was a reference to Life is Strange. The blue butterfly, the photography, life being weird, life is strange. Ah! Okay. Masterpiece. <laughs> is that supposed to be me? Yeah, come on. Look at the hair. Nailed it, right? Honestly, it's beautiful. Hey, don't make fun of me. I'm not. Oh, 
maybe a little bit, but I like it. For real. Well, it helps to have a good model. So, this Don't is flirt. what you're up to while I was out there doing your work? What can I say? I'm a multitasker. A multitasker? I think you made a mistake here. Total amount should be 36. Oh, how dare you, sir? What? I just don't want you to get in trouble. Yeah, you're right. You know, I'm off my game today. All right. Anything else you wanted me to check? Yep. Hold on a second. Remember, strange vampire is One the last thing, the and then thing. we should be free from this purgatory. Hit me. Can you count how many plushies we have in that box over there? Okay. All right. So that's a poster for Life is Strange. Uh, Red Blood. I bet this is a reference to the game Vampire or Vampire, which is on my to playlist. I forgot they were Don't Nod, though. And um, remember. Remember, remember. Probably remember me. Oh, I loved that game. Ah, eh, 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 eh. I get it. Oh, I loved that game. That game was great. So, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, because there's not a ten, we'll go with eleven. Uh, you've got about 11 left in that box. <sighs> Did I get it wrong? Michael? Ouch, what the fuck? Hey, sorry. It was just too tempting. <laughs> Lesson number one in the ancient art of inventory. Never let your guard down. <laughs> you have no idea what you just started. First one with three confirmed hits wins. Cool. Gotcha. Oh, come on. Is that all you got, Ronan? Just you wait. I've got a strategy. Oh, yeah? We'll see. <laughs> gotcha. One more hit and you're out. Prepare to feel my wrath. Oh <laughs> God, you're corny. So is this a typical work day for you? Nah, I usually don't have such good looking company back here. Oh, so I'm good looking company, huh? Yeah, well don't let it get to your head. I'm still destroying you. God, they're cute. Gotcha. Ah. Oh. <laughs> right in the Man, face. You're good. <laughs> I told you not to doubt the golden arm. <laughs> well, I'll never make that mistake again. Okay. I I need to finish this inventory thing real quick. Your sister's probably done already. Here. Let's hit the bitch's grotto. The, the bitch's grotto. The couch where Allison and I sit during breaks. Ah, all right, cool. Let me see what you've done with the place. Okay. I guess way well, let me back at the couch. Sit. Will it let me sit next to him or? Okay, we already talked about the picture. Don't tell me he got Tessa involved with the Alliance for Traditional Families. Batista? No, he's way too chill for that. That's all Tessa.
Why didn't he try to make himself look a little more mayor-like? He looks like a cartoon college professor. He really does, though. Oh, hey, see that container? That's for you. Huh? It's the trout I caught yesterday at the buzzard hole. Grilled it up with my world-renowned marinade. Oh, wow. Uh, thank you. World-renowned marinade, huh? What's in it? A magician never reveals his secrets. I'm surprised Tessa let you hang this up. Yeah, she hates it. But as long as I don't promote my lifestyle in front of the customers, she doesn't say anything. Man, must be exhausting to spend your days educating these people. <laughs> Here's the thing, I don't. Opening the minds of this town would be a full-time fucking job. And emotional Preach. labor pays shit. Absolutely. Do you ever get lonely in Delos Crossing? Yeah, sometimes. That's why I'm always in Juno working with the JCE, meeting new people. I gotta make my shit happen for me, because no one else will. Right. I feel you. Hey, I hope this isn't too personal, but you ever been with anyone in Delos Crossing? I dated a guy in high school for a minute, but we had to keep it quiet. I've been with a few other people, but that shit's tricky out here. And what about you? You ever been with a guy? I mean, assuming you're into guys, which <laughs> I guess I kind of did. I'm still figuring my shit out. I'm not sure if I'm made to be with anyone, you know? Yeah, of course. Valid. And don't ever feel like you have to rush into anything. Yeah, I don't, but thank you. Anyway, no way. You like Duplex Duo too? Yeah, <laughs> Allison got me into him. We were supposed to go to his show in Juno a few months ago. And what happened? Uh, you ever heard of Moon Rocks? <laughs> we took two hits before going to the show and that was it. Our feet couldn't find the floor, not our finest hour. And I'm done. So, you think Tom's got the chops to be the mayor of Delos Crossing? Uh, I don't know. The guy's sweet and not entirely incompetent. But it doesn't really matter. Vote for him to vote for Tessa. She'd be the one running the show. Valid. So I take it you're not Tessa's biggest fan? Yeah, you know, every time I put up flyers for queer events, she accidentally covers them. <sighs> Jesus. It's fucked, it's fucked up. Oh, Jesus has nothing to do with that, trust me. Being religious ah! doesn't mean you gotta weaponize your religion against other people. That's a trick. Yeah. Absolutely. I hear you. What do you think about Tom's policy ideas? He's got a few surprisingly bold stances. Yeah, like his gun regulations. I gotta admit, I'm pretty impressed he's pushing for that out here. Exactly, but I'm not totally sure how I feel about that, though, to be honest. Really? Really. Historically speaking, the government taking weapons away from my people has not gone well for us. Oh, yeah. I never thought about it that way. So is he a cool boss? Uh, cool? I'm pretty sure that's not a word anyone has ever used to describe Milk Toast Tom. But he's alright. <laughs> I mean, not the worst boss I've ever had. Alright. Uh, yes. Um, a lot of the people in this, uh, a lot of the people in this, uh, game are alaskan natives i believe the word that they've used oh i'm gonna butcher this and i apologize is tlingit uh they've shown it several times they, they show it several times and pronounce it in the first chapter <coughs> um it's spelled t-l-i-n-g-i-t -I -I if i remember correctly uh if i'm wrong i apologize to you know everybody um but yeah, I'm assuming that's the primary uh, 
native culture that most of the people in this uh, game that are not just Caucasian are of. We know that Marianne, their mother, the twins' mother, uh, was also part of that culture as well. And that Eddie was as well. Is this Chief Brown? Yeah. Are you guys related or? Nah, but same clan. Clan. Which clan? Octopus clan. Raven Moity. Huh. Badass. So, you close with everybody in the clan? Yeah, we're pretty tight-knit. I mean, we're all kind of spread out, so I don't know everyone that well, but there's still family. I was really close to my Uncle William until he passed. He's the one whose grave I want to visit. Oh, yeah. Of course. I gotta tell you, it's so weird to finally meet the other Ronin. You mean the OG Ronin? I was born first, you know. Is that so? I thought Allison said she was. Well, our mother never actually told us, but it was me. So, why is it so weird to meet me? Because I just heard Allison tell your story so many times. She told me everything about you. The fireweed, your transition. I hope that's okay, by the way. Yeah. It's fine. She asked me first. Yeah, figures. That lady is thorough and she loves you like crazy. I know. So, yeah, uh, you were probably the first person to know about it other than Allison. I'm glad you trusted me. And it's great to finally get to know you in the flesh. You're pretty all right. <laughs> but you're not too bad yourself. I try not to be, especially around guys I'm trying to impress. <laughs> so I wasn't blowing smoke when I said you should move to Juno with us. I know. I... I, I've got a community there. It could be yours too. Hmm. Fitting in. There's a concept. You, you have no idea how life-saving a chosen family can be. Hell yeah. Pull me out of the dark more times than I can count. I hear you. Hey, can I ask you a question? Of course. Shoot. Why do you care so much if I move to Juno? <laughs> Look, like I said, I <laughs> I want to get to know you. Because I'm just that fascinating, huh? Honestly, yeah. I think you might be one of a kind, Tyler Ronan. I don't know. So, okay, okay, okay. Let's take a vibe check here. Chat, what's the vibe? Are we feeling, from the conversation we've had up till now, how are we feeling about these two? Like, are we feeling like maybe Tyler might be into that a little bit too? Or are we feeling like, you know? <clears throat> what you think? What do we think? What do we think? Cause like they've been kind of cute they've been kind of adorable and michael is allison's best friend and we know he's good people and he's been doing his best to like be cool and chill to us um and like you know you're right you're right. That's that's what I'm worried about too. But there's a difference between like it's not saying let's get married, you know? Like it's not the options aren't let's get married and I hate you never talk to me again, right? It's you're pretty great too versus we're not looking for the same thing, you know? It's a, are we opening that road as a potential possibility or not? Like, I do genuinely feel like they are hitting it off. 
But the question I want that we're asking is are we going are we trying to shut that off completely? Cuz that that we're not looking for the same thing looks feels very definitive. Whereas the Your Swell 2 is kind of a we'll see what happens, you know? <clears throat> So what's the vibe check here? Yeah. And since Tyler just said, I'm still figuring my shit out, you know, it's, there's a maybe there, you know? And it's not like this is a romance game where they've ha provided two options where it's like, this is the straight option, this is the gay option, you know? Like in like Mass Effect or something, right? It's just a, what story do you want to tell? Or do you, do you want, do you feel is right to open to tell, you know? Uh, and I just, I don't know, I don't know. I'm kind of leaning your swell too. Because it doesn't feel like a shut up and kiss me, you know? <laughs> but it also isn't a go fuck, go the fuck away, ew. You know? Is that the vibe? All right, that's the vibe. Let's go with that. Well, golly gee, Michael. I think you're swell too. You're the cat's pajamas. <laughs> Shut up. I've got way better compliments than that. But I can't open with my best, right? It's cool. So, I'll get more of those if I get to know you better? For sure. If that's something you'd be interested in. I might be. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, hey. I've been standing at that counter for an hour waiting for you two dum-dums to come back. Are you guys ready to go? Sorry, we were flirting. I think we've done about as much damage as we can back here. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that did turn a little bit more lovey-dovey than I was kind of hoping, but I'm glad it didn't shut the door, you know? Here we are. Lakeview Cemetery. Thanks for letting me hit your ride over. No problem. You sure we can't drive you back? Nah, you're like stretching my legs. It isn't far. And anyway, can't put the wind in a bottle. <sighs> All right. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Can't put the That's wind so in a bottle. Be at our parents' grave, not far from the entrance. Look for a big crooked tree. You can't miss it. I'm gonna go check in with my uncle. Good luck. For real. Hey. You look pretty spooked. I've never been a big fan of cemeteries. Especially after, you know. I promise after this we can chill at the house, cool? I never wanted to come back here. Yeah, that makes two of us. I never wanted to come back here. Yeah, that makes two of us. Looking everywhere except for where we need hey, to go. Are back that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that's the edge of the map. I love this view. Like, that's a beautiful view for a cemetery. That must be Tessa's car. Wait, is her license plate breath? It is. It 
is the license plate is breath. Ah, okay. Fucking religious people. <laughs> no, not really, but also. <laughs> the pearl of a runlet that never ceases. With a hollow, boiling voice, it speaks. And has spoken since hills were turfless peaks. Damn, dude. The water almost makes this place feel peaceful. Yeah, almost. Do you mind if we keep moving? The water almost <laughs> makes this place Valid. feel peaceful. Yeah, almost. Do you mind if we keep moving? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I see Tessa, so let's go this way. Hey, or at least I thought I saw Tessa. That way. Ugh, fine. Ooh, that slushy noise was good. So, was a good slushy did noise. Did you ever come back? Here? Shh, keep it down. Better? Much. Why do people always feel like they have to whisper in cemeteries? I don't know. Probably just a mirror neuron thing. A what? Monkey see, monkey do. Yeah. Uh, anyway, have you been back here at all since the funeral? No. And we never had a reason to. Thankfully. Emmanuel, somebody. My mother made us come here all the time. It was so weird. Right, Yvonne? By the way, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Glad you could pop in. Mourning those who have journeyed to the other side. As love transcends all boundaries, the passing of a clan member is an event felt... A clan as in native, not clan with a K. Uh, <laughs> uh, is an event felt throughout the community of the people come together to mourn a loved one and lift their opposite clan members' spirits. When an eagle is being mourned, the ravens shower love and strength upon mourning eagle clans. Likewise, when a raven is being mourned, the eagles are there for their ravens. After the service, it is customary for members of the opposite... I'm not going to try to pronounce that word, even though it was said not that long ago, to comfort the grieving family by bringing out their... They're at uwu. That's not how that's pronounced. And I'm struggling not to make the obvious joke. Clan owned regalia to symbolically catch tears before they hit the ground and comfort grieving clan members with support. Because it's a cultural thing, I don't want to mock it, you know? But, like, oh, it's struggle. Um, especially because you guys, anybody who knows me knows that I am an irreverent son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, celebrating life. The 40-day party is observed 40 days after the passing to pay respects to the departed. After be Some believe this is a more recent tradition. Family members organize a shared meal where a fish, a fire dish, not fish dish, a fire dish... One plate of food is burned to nourish and comfort the spirit of the departed. One year or more from the passing, a potlatch is held to first mourn. To, is held to first mourn, then celebrate the life of the departed. It is hosted by the clan of the deceased. This is to honor the departed clan member through a traditional ceremony. Show appreciation and pay debts to the opposite. Uh who supported the clan during their time of mourning. Due to the national outlawing of native religions and ways of life, much of our knowledge of the old ways of... Cling it, cling it. Sorry. Sorry, I'm trying. Spiritual practice has been lost. 
below are two everlasting examples of the love and reverence we continue to show our departed in the tradition of our ancestors. Yvonne, why are you saying, why are you singing the Google song? Are you telling me to Google how it's pronounced and stuff? Mom, why do we always come here? Does it bother you? No, it's just weird because we don't know any of these people. I mean, except Eddie's mom. It never hurts to say hello. Because they're very lonely. That's right, sweetie. And sometimes, even if you can't see them, they stay with you, in here, always here. Mom? <laughs> always. She loved us, a lot, but sometimes it was like loving us hurt her. Do you think she was just really scared of losing us? Maybe, yeah. I don't know. I mean, most parents are scared of losing their kids. And you're right. And I would if I wasn't already half an hour over my stream time. Actually, I probably wouldn't even if I was on if, if, just because I'm on stream. But especially because I'm half an hour over stream time and I really want to get to the end of the chapter. And instead, I'm just going to try very hard not to, you know, mock things or mispronounce things without oh, apologizing. Like a tree, but no Tessa. Let's check around for her parents' grave, just to make sure this is the right spot. Do you think it's possible Michael remembered it wrong? Well, I've done inventory with him before, so yes. <laughs> There's a very good chance that Tessa is, is at Marianne's grave, because I'm pretty sure that's her over there. Short and simple. I like it. Come on. There's only a handful left. We'll meet again. Louis. Don't know Wasn't where. He that fancy fisherman? Don't yeah. know where. I used to watch his relapse of the show he was on. Every once in a while his face pops up. It's super weird. again Guess again this is probably the Leo. Becky grave that's the one <sighs> don't tell me we missed her Eagle. Hello, Mr. Eagle. Kids. Eagle. It's time. Wait, is her name Yassi? It is. Or their name. Adriel Yassi. Yassi. What? Oh, Alice is getting a cold. Wait, is this the one we called Big Crook? <laughs> the exact one. Why didn't we call it Gnarls Branch? Total missed opportunity. Uh, because we weren't hip to basketball back then? Or CeeLo Green? Damn. I remember it going all the way up to the clouds. Everything does when you're four feet tall. Valid. Hazel Salazar. What's the rock say? Lost in the chaos of history. What's that mean? Not sure. But Michael should know. To honor those no, no longer with us, the Klingit, uh, or Tlingit, I apologize. Preservation Community, or Committee, and the Community of Delos 
dedicate or Delos dedicate this monument as an everlasting connection between past, present, and future generations. May the memory of our dearly departed never be lost in the chaos of history. May this be a resting place for our loved ones who have journeyed to the other shore. May our eternal love soothe the wounds of days past towards a brighter horizon. Come on, there was a. Let me. Let me interact with it! Where are you going? Fine. Fine! I can walk fine on my own. It'll be quick, okay? Then we'll get something to eat. The day of the funeral. I barely remember. That's probably for the best. I don't think either of us are exactly eager to relive what went on behind that gate. So... I know I said we didn't have to visit her grave. But it feels like the right thing to do. Yeah, exactly. Let's go see if we can talk to Michael first, because I think I realize now that this is Michael. When did Michael's uncle die? Last year. It was really hard on him. He's still feeling it. That's the potlatch that they that time, no uh, Allison mentioned Michael was gonna in? make. Come on over. Make or have. Ooh, that's a name. I love that name. Or is that the epitaph? So, how are you, um, holding up? <sighs> Everything's such a mess. I thought we'd almost be done packing by now. I'm so ready to put this place behind us. At least Mr. Hollywood Is this a bad time? With you? Never. Don't mind me. I'm not really here. Hey, I get to see your ugly mug almost every day. You're old news, lady. You wound me. Deeply. <laughs> so... Can I help you guys out somehow? So what was your uncle like? Oh boy. Where do I start? Y you know that one grumpy grandpa in all the sitcoms? The one that types like a T-Rex and never leaves his recliner? <laughs> I think I'm getting the picture. <laughs> Not yet you aren't. As grumpy as he was, they didn't make him any sweeter than him. He's the kind of guy who accepted you for where you were at, even when he didn't approve. Not many of those out there. You and your uncle were really close, huh? Definitely. I could push his buttons without even trying. My family's old school clinket. There Spent it is. more time with my uncle than my dad. He was the first person to test out all my new recipes. Even before Allison. Guess I should thank Uncle William for saving me from a muffin top. <laughs> <sighs> Can't wait to get home and try that famous marinade. So, what's the secret ingredient? What do you like to know, huh? Bird syrup. Uh, how could you? Twins before hose, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Twins before hose! Hey, can I ask you something about this place? Eh, shoot. What's the story behind the Clinket Memorial? May the memory of our dearly departed never be lost in the chaos of history. That was Uncle William. <laughs> lost in the chaos of history? Well, let's say you wanted room for a school or a road and didn't give a shit about ethics. Easy. You just dug up our ancestors. That should happen a yep. lot. God. Yep. Assholes. Yeah. Yep. And I mean, it still happens, but not as much. We have the elders <laughs> to thank for that. What's the story behind the Clinket Memorial? Oh, we just May the memory about that. of our dearly departed never be lost in the chaos of history. That was Uncle William. <laughs> lost in the chaos of history well let's say you wanted room for a school or a road and didn't give a shit about ethics 
Easy. You just dug up our ancestors. That shit happened a lot. God. Assholes. Yeah. And I mean, it still happens, but not as much. We have the elders to thank for that. I'll stop bugging you now. Well, I'm here if you're ever curious. Talk to you later. You bet. So, how are you, um, holding up? <sighs> Everything's such a mess. I thought we'd almost be done packing by now. I'm so ready to put this place behind us. At least Mr. Hollywood Handsome over there is good company. Funny how you never mentioned what your brother looked like before he got into town. Oh, I just thought I'd surprise you. Yeah. Hey, you do realize I can hear you, right? Cover your ears, the grown-ups are talking. <laughs> anyway, girl, I know you're in it right now, but try not to let it get to you. Yuna's gonna seem real boring after all this, huh? God, boring sounds so good right now. Binging terrible shows while my amazing roommate cooks something delicious. Heaven. Delicious food for a tax return? You got yourself a deal, mister. I remember staring at the water during the funeral. <sighs> Sorry, did I just get disconnected? My live. I am here. Did y'all lose me at all? Is acting weird for a minute? Okay. Yeah, everything went red for like a millisecond. I, so I was worried. Damn. I forgot how hard Mary and Tokyo when Eddie's mom died. Well, we were only four. But yeah. She lost one of her only friends. She was always saying how she never would have found a place in Delos Crossing. Her death kicked off Marianne's, you know. It definitely didn't help, but no. It was years later. That means Carol Brown must have been Big Frog. Rest in peace, Snowball. There, I'm pretty sure that's Tessa up there. Can't go that way. That is a hell of a view. Shh. 
<sighs> I want to see your grave before we go. Oh, but I wanted to go back. Fine. No, I want to see your grave before we go. I still have the helmet. Sorry. All I remember is a bird jumping around on a stump during the funeral. She's got to be here somewhere. Not this one. Still not the one. This might take a while. No dice. Not hers. Where is she? Why can't I remember? Is that her? What the hell was going on with you? What broke? <laughs> Why didn't you say anything? We were your goblins. <laughs> you didn't have to do it all alone. I wasn't expecting to see... What are you... What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Feeling a little guilty, maybe? Pass on. Our graves are all anyone has to remember us by. Letting hers just fall apart would. I'll wait. I mean, I would say that you guys should have to wait, that you guys should watch it on the VOD, but no, that's a little cruel. I'll wait. It's only two minutes. Actually, I will be right back. I have to pee.
Okay. All right. So, Yvonne B says we're back. Does that mean everybody else is back too? Can I get? Can I get a confirmation from Melador that he's back? Well, it now says we're good. Okay. Being cruel. I'm not a cruel person. Cruel enough to call social services on our mother. I, I, I wanted to protect you. Marianne was getting worse all the time. I was afraid that if things kept going the way they were, then one day we were going to end up dead. Look, I'm sorry I didn't tell you the whole story back in the store, but I didn't want you to. to enough with the excuses. What the hell happened to her? Why'd you turn your back on us? Your mom was always just barely getting by. And over the years, she burned a lot of goodwill. It got so bad, no one was willing to hire her. And the stress of that, well, it, it took its toll. I tried to help, but she pushed me away. She pushed us all away. In the end, she isolated herself from everyone. She was alone and out of options. She had us! Until you threatened to have us taken away. I couldn't let her drag you down with her. She had you stealing for God's sake. Your mother never wanted to be a part of this community. She always thought she was better than the rest of us. A spoiled little girl playing fairy princess in the woods. If she just settled down with someone instead of running around with married men, well... Oh. Just ask Sam Kansky how much better that would have been for everyone. Wait, what? I... Oh, God. Oh. What happened between them? I, I wasn't thinking. Please, just forget I said anything. Tessa. All I know is whatever went on, Laura left Sam over it. But I shouldn't have said anything about that. I promised I wouldn't. I'm sorry, kids. Ooh. Do we go accusatory? Do we go understanding? Or do we go a bit salty? Up till now, I've been kind of trying to lean a little bit understanding in things. But like... Ah, I... I... Mm. Let's go understanding. Let's continue the trend I've been going, which is being understanding about things. Because everything is complicated. Life is not easy. <clears throat> you were worried. And you did what you thought you had to do. Yeah, true, Matt. Get it? We both do. The situation was so fucked that, well, there probably wasn't a good answer. Thank you. I... I... No. I could It's also been more. ten years. Marianne was fragile. She needed help, and I... I failed her. It's my fault. She's gone. I know I've made mistakes. All I can do now is say that I'm sorry. If I could give you back your mother, I would. I don't deserve your forgiveness, especially yours, Tyler. But if there's a place for me in your lives, I'd like to be there. I have to know something first. Are you good with who I am? I've been thinking about that since you came home. I believe that my life is better for having lived it by God's word. But I also believe we don't always understand what he's saying to us. I pray for guidance, and seeing you standing here in front of me, such a strong and thoughtful young man, I think I have his answer. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Tessa, I know the last couple of days have been hated. I'm up for a fresh start if you are, but it's not really up to me. Tyler? Ooh. Are you really ready to forgive?
forgive her? I think she regrets what she did. But I totally understand if you don't want to see her anymore. It's your call. I thought you couldn't stand her. What happened? She did the only thing she thought she could. I... I can relate to that. I'm done losing people. I'm done losing people. And if we can't let people grow, then what the hell kind of chance do we have? Thank you. Both of you. Kids, I never knew your mother's whole story, but it was obviously very painful. She always said you two were the only good luck she'd ever had. I'm going to try harder to forgive her. I hope you can as well. If you two are in town tomorrow, come by the cafe. Lunch is on me. They're gonna be coconut cake on the menu? You know, I think there just might be. I'll see you two tomorrow then. We'll be there. Come on. I wish there was, oh, I'm still oh, here, okay. Huh? Yeah, it was. I had pretty much given up on her, but I guess sometimes people change. I feel like a total ass right now. You shouldn't. She needed to hear all of that. Yeah, you're probably right. So I might bring in a peace offering my first day back. Any ideas? Uh, Jesus stuff? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe I'll just finally bring back that book I borrowed six months ago. Yeah, that would that would do it. Well, let me go all the way back cuz there was some stuff that I didn't get to look at. I doubt it'll let me look at it all, but Bless you, Allison. Okay, so there's the Marianne uh, grave. We did up there. We did not go up here. Oh, it won't let me. Can we head back to the car? Maybe. Fine. Fine. Uh, I regret. Oh, well. I'll just have to replay the game in my free time. Because there's a couple of things I regret not doing it, uh, th it around here and in the first chapter, so... I can always go back and change answers and stuff and later. Alright, alright, let's go. sit down for a bit yes actually not a bad view right yeah hell no that's I beautiful look at that cemeteries in nice spots takes a little bit of the sting off listen i know this has been hard I'm really grateful you saw it through with me. Fireweed was great, but there was no one really there for me like that. You know, you're the only one. Hey, brothers and sisters, right? But it's been way more brothers than sisters lately, which is why I'm trying to say thank you. You really don't have to. You saved my life, Allison. Only for you to end up locked up in fireweed for the rest of your childhood. Wait, are you still blaming yourself for that? Don't. It was my choice. It's just... I stole your life, Tyler. And then I totally wasted it. That's not true. You're on your way to Denali. Michael's gonna be a famous chef. And, and what am I doing? Nothing. 
Too real. You were just dealing with what happened the way that you needed to, all right? As soon as we figure this shit out, we're gonna sell the house, and you're gonna go to Juno. You're gonna kick ass. You make it sound so easy. No. We never had a shot at easy. But we always pull through, right? Yeah. You're right. Hey. Wherever Ranger Tyler ends up next, he better come down from the hills to visit us city folk every now and then. You hear? For sure. And anyway, it's not gonna be for a while. We've got time. Oh yeah, of course. We do. So I guess we know the story now, huh? Not fully. Marianne was done with Delos. Delos was done with her. That's not fully all of it. Maybe Something else was going proud, on. But she worked so hard for so long. And when she reached the end of her rope, no one was there to help her. Not even Tessa. Or Eddie. And when she heard social services was coming, she... She... Gave up. But killed her kids? Really? I don't know. Still feels like there's something missing. Right? gonna understand what was going through her mind. I'll bet even she didn't. It's probably always gonna feel that way. <laughs> Unfortunately, most of the time we don't get closure in our lives. Oh. I'm gonna fall asleep the second I hit the couch. You better rally. We still have to do some cleaning before bed. Uh, do we have to? Hey, whoever packs the most gets the big couch tonight. Shit. Allison. I'll get the fire extinguisher. Stay there. I got it. What happened? There, there was a, a guy. He smashed me in the face with the door. What guy? What did he look like? I'm not sure. I couldn't see straight, and, and he was all in black. God. Why would someone try to burn down our barn? I don't know. It's a garage. But I'm going to find out. Well, at least he left us the junker. Did he really have to smash everything? So, did Eddie teach you how to put out a fire? Nope. I taught myself. <sighs> Great. Wonder I might have found something. This gas can was already here this morning. He didn't bring it with him. He went looking under the rug? I'll even dump the drawers. Huh. At least you were spared. You really turned this place upside down. New collectible, the moon hag. Oh, I missed a collectible! Ah! That's probably one of the things that I could have found in the cemetery. Dang it! Ah! Fine. The moon hag is an old and powerful witch. 
She lures her innocent victims deep in the <coughs> ice and traps them there forever. I guess I will have to play this game again. This guy went on a tear. Oh, let me look at the thing Allison found. There we go. Is that a box under the barn? Yeah. What the hell? I think this is where the fire started. So he was trying to burn whatever's inside? We should check it out. I'm gonna need to remove a few more planks to get to it. Hmm. Where could we possibly find a tool to do that? Is that a box under the barn? Yeah. <coughs> what the hell? I think this is where the fire started. So he was trying to burn whatever's inside? We should check it out. I'm gonna need to remove a few more planks to get to it. Hmm. Where could we pop? Guess we know how he made the hole. But then he heard y'all coming. Step back. I'll be fine. I'm gonna laugh if it hits her in the face. storage box like this. Marianne. Let's open it. Three digits. Any ideas? Mm. Marianne was never really a numbers kind of person. What's that there? Some kind of carving. Not sure what it is, though. I know what it is. Wait. This. Look. It's the same symbol. The secret keeper. Well, let's see if we can find any numbers. Yeah, this is the one that I was talking about with the... We actually read this one earlier. Uh... Huh. Oh, wait. There's a three here. Three here, zero there. Uh, in the art. A one. One, three, zero. One, three, zero. I did it. Guessing she didn't know how much of an ass he'd turn out to be. Dear Marianne, I need to see you again. I know how that sounds, and I don't want you to, t to think I chase after all the new girls in Delos Crossing. I've always taken my vows seriously, but something changed when I met you. When we're together, I feel like I'm doing 80 down the highway with my lights turned off. And I never want to stop. I know it isn't right, and we both have a lot to lose. But I need to be with you again. I hope you feel the same heart symbol. I bought you a little something for next time. I can't wait to see how it looks on you. Fuck. That's rough. Marianne, I'm sorry you're in this situation. I know this, you feel... This guy tried to push Marianne to get an abortion. Even though she wanted to keep us. I know you feel you'd feel I know you feel you'd make a great mother and I don't doubt you will someday. But right now, we have to be sure we don't ruin three lives. My marriage hasn't been happy for some time, but she doesn't deserve this. 
but mostly I'm worried about you people here talk and I don't want you to have to go through that. I know money has been tight, but I'll do what I can to help you do the right thing. Just let me know how much you need. Guessing she didn't know how much of an ass he'd turn out to be. I don't think it's Sam. Uh, the reason I don't think it's Sam is because... Old Bear, you are my dear friend, and I appreciate all you've done for me. But I would sooner you have left me to the wolves than marry you. And that is how it will always be. Now that said, he may have split off, ended the marriage, and then been proposing to her, and her saying no. I don't think that's the case. I think it's gonna be Eddie. That's everything. What the hell? So, Marianne hid a box under the barn. Box full of letters from our deadbeat dad. He turned the whole place upside down and didn't take anything. All he wanted was that box. And he was willing to burn down the barn to get rid of what was inside. You know what it all means, right? Yep. That guy had an affair with Marianne, and he just tried to torch the evidence. He must have heard we were clearing out the house. He was worried we'd find it. You know, I... I can't shake the feeling I've seen him here before. Actually, no, I don't think it is Eddie. I don't think it's Eddie, I don't think it's Sam. Because I still stand by my initial statement of it being the Mad Hunter. That she was running away from. I think it's the old man. you but I haven't forgotten anything about that night I would have said the same thing but something felt different I need to see the rest but you know what happens down there that's the thing I'm not sure I do <sighs> all right let's go some kind of work booth maybe fishing boots he didn't try to get in here someone here that night in the woods no it was just i i saw who the hell did i actually see i wonder if it'll actually let me go out here hey what are you doing okay fine it won't let me go out there Trail ends here. It looks like he jumped into the gully. He really didn't want us to figure out who he was. Well, he's been avoiding us for 20 years, so. He really didn't want us to figure out. Hey, are there footsteps on the other side? Yeah, that must be where he climbed out. Well, he's long gone. straight for it. 
No stops, no turns. He was on a mission. That was the Mad Hunter. What? What are you talking about? That night, I thought I saw the Mad Hunter in the woods, but I guess it was just some asshole. Some asshole who just fucking stood there and watched while our mother chased me with a shotgun. Do you think it was the same guy? Maybe. I mean, it had to be him, right? They were wearing the same fishing gear. Yeah, unless everyone who wants to mess with us is coordinating outfits. And wait! He was here once before, wasn't he? A few days before Marianne died? Maybe? Hold on, do you feel that? Tyler, not there. Our mother fought with someone on the dock, about us. We need to know if it was the same guy. But what if it's not that memory? What if it's... I can't go through that again. We have to take that chance. But do we really? I mean, someone just tried to burn our barn down. Yeah, and that means we've got to be close to something. I'm not going on that dock. Just one more time, please. There's always just one more. Every time it seems like we're done with this, something new pops up. What if this is the only chance to figure out who our father is? Then we go on living our lives without him, just like we always have. Come on, we need to know the truth. For her. What if I don't want to know the truth, huh? Did you ever consider that? No. You just push and push and- You have to take responsibility for your part in Marianne's death. What? How? How? How can you say that to me? I didn't. But I, I did, right? Earlier, to Eddie. But I, I swear I didn't just say that to you. So we can't even trust our own voices now? God, I, I don't know. Allison. I'll do it. Let's go. Come on, let me. I told you that would happen. We almost had it, though. That was us watching Marianne fight with that guy. Try to focus on him, all right? Don't think about anything else. I'll... I'll try. I don't owe you anything. It's been a little all over the place lately. All over the place? I've just been trying to survive. If you want to make sure I don't get desperate, you could help us out. Lend me some money. 
What happened? Why did it stop? I can't, Tyler. But we were so damn close. I'm sorry, but I'm done. That's it? You're just giving up, just like that? You can't do this. We owe her. Marianne is gone, Tyler. And nothing we do is gonna change that. Don't go, please. You can't keep running from this alley, or it's only gonna get worse. Watch it! You're stepping on my foot! Can you hear what they're saying? Quiet! We don't want Mom to catch us out of bed. There's no money. I've never asked you for anything, but right now they need you. It's not gonna happen. I've got everything I need to nail your ass in that barn. And just what do you think happens after that? What do you mean? Well... If those kids have a father, do you really think there's a court out there that'll let you keep them? No! You have no claim to my children! Get the hell off my property, now! If you ever come back here, I'm going to kill you! Allison? Well, fuck a duck. Okay, there's that. Yeah. Yep. Aw. So anyway, before I get sucked into the next chapter, uh, that's it for the night. I know I went a whole ass hour and a half over my stream time, but geez, this game is amazing and I love it. <coughs> so yeah, uh, thank you all for tuning in and hanging out. Um, <coughs> if you want to catch up on this uh, stream, the VOD of it will be available next week on my YouTube um the next chapter will be played next friday same bat time same bat channel absolutely absolutely a captivating story and trauma and friendship <coughs> and family but anyway uh <coughs> excuse me we'll continue it next friday um if you want to if you missed the first episode from last Friday, you could catch that currently on my YouTube channel, uh, which is in that link tree right down there below. 
If you're looking for other entertain uh, other entertainment options, you can check out Yvonne B, Melador219, and a bunch of others I have listed up here at the top. I have even more recommendations in that link tree as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Also in that link tree uh, are links to my Discord where you can hang out with me and my friends, my socials where you can keep up to date with when I'm streaming and stuff. Um, uh, my YouTube, where, like I said, where you can uh, catch up on the VODs of all my streams. And uh, also links to my Patreon, where you can support me. My throne, where you can uh, get me amazing gifts like this beautiful, beautiful controller that my viewers so kindly and generously gifted me through the throne website. Um, and uh, yeah. We'll be back. That's it for me for the week. We'll be back on Monday with more Assassin's Creed. And in the meantime, remember to have empathy, be kind, be safe, love yourselves and love everyone around you. And I'll see you all next time. I love you all. Peace out.